Hey guys I'm Yurizi. This story is all about what if Naruto found out about the Uzumaki clan and was a prodigy. A small twist of fate made him aware of his heritage, unsealing the legacies his parents left behind. Graduating from the academy at age 7, he's well on his way. He found a kindred spirit in Uchiha Itachi, and his cousin Shisui is along for the ride. They're on the path to unsealing the legacy left by their ancestors, both the dark and the light. Before we proceed with the story, please like and subscribe to this channel if you liked the video and don't forget to check the description for the other works of the author if you liked the story. Let's start. Chapter 4, Fourth Legacy Fourth Legacy, Prodigy and Paranoia You're someone who has seen how foolish humans become when consumed by hatred. Uchiha Itachi Naruto woke up with cold sweat drenching his whole body. He quickly gathered himself and moaned at his current state. He had to do his laundry twice a week at the rate he was using up his shirts whenever he woke up like this. He once contemplated sleeping naked but that's not an option in autumn, it may not be as cold as winter but it is still cold nonetheless. He knew he was still a child, and to be haunted by nightmares is normal for children like him. But Naruto wanted to act like a mature boy, since whenever he acted mature the Sandaime would listen to him more, and so does the rest of his Umbu guards. All the times he acted as a brash and loud boy was simply to attract attention of villagers, but he realized that lately he cared more for the attention of the few people who acknowledged him. So telling them about his nightmare was a big no-no. Especially if there is a chance that they might think that he was not mature enough after all and therefore not ready to graduate early. No way in hell. Not to mention it was not a dream he could simply tell to anyone. The dream was always the same. Amidst the sound of rattling chains he saw a blonde baby who he recognized as himself due to the whisker-like marks on his face. He was cradled not by one but two pairs of arms, warm and loving. But there was so much blood and he cried as hard as he could to no avail as the warm cradle became colder and colder. He also saw a massive claw, one he knew so well, which belonged to Karama. He had cried himself hoarse when he realized what he was seeing, or at least what he thought he was seeing. The scene of his parents impaled in Karama's claw. The scene of his parents dying from Karama who was under someone else's control. I had parents. He whispered to himself. Anyone else would feel incredulous hearing him utter those words. Of course everyone had parents who gave birth to them. However to a boy who has been orphaned for so long, the concept of having loving parents was foreign. Ironically enough, Karama seemed to understand the concept better than him. Since to Karama, the sage of six paths was a father to the fox and the other bijus. Thus this dream was something he never told Karama, and the fox never asked either. Naruto had forgiven Karama for his parents' death, and that forgiveness was something he didn't have to say out loud. Both of them had come to an unspoken agreement of the forgiveness exchanged between them, it was mutual. Since then, academy instructors started to leave him alone, which for him was much better than the sabotage he once endured. It seemed that they really wanted him to get out of their hair as soon as possible, and Naruto wanted the same. At least for now the academy was the least of his problems. All he needed to do was do his best to get that apprenticeship right and he'll be out of the academy. So Naruto poured all of his efforts to do his best for the rest of the year to further his studies in every field. He really was not required to be the best in practice in other fields aside from Fuinjutsu so he could still work on his own pace in theory and focus in his chosen field. Much to Naruto's delight the Sandaime gave him his full support, and even went as far as to give his old books for Naruto as a birthday present. Torai warned Naruto about his naturally large chakra reserves and suggested that he start to learn chakra control exercises early on, because if he didn't he would be bound to screw up in chakra sensitive techniques. So Naruto started to squeeze in tree climbing and water walking in his already heavily packed schedule. While life was good for Naruto, he noticeably started to distance himself from his classmates. If before he kept trying to get their attention, now he was too busy with his studies that he completely neglected his already non-existent social life with his peers. It was worrying the Sandaime, but he couldn't blame Naruto for focusing in his studies. Then again it seemed that Naruto had given up on trying to form any friendships with his classmates, all the boy could think about was getting out of the academy and fulfilling the Sandaime's expectation. Naruto still called him Ji-chan from time to time but whenever they talked about his apprenticeship Naruto would switch to Hokage-sama. 
He had no idea where Naruto learned how to act professional and awkwardly mature at times, but it was obvious that Naruto tried to adapt speaking like this with his most frequent companions, which consisted of the Hokage, the Ichiraku family and his umbu detail. But it was not healthy for a boy his age to only socialize with adults, and umbu shouldn't be Naruto's most frequent companions. The Sandaime brought this topic up with the umbu squad he assigned to protect Naruto, and thankfully they had a solution. Hopefully Naruto could bond with someone around his age before he graduated and completely cut himself off from his peers in pursuit of knowledge. Naruto was becoming too much like Orochimaru for his comfort. While the Sandaime was worrying over his non-existent social life, Naruto was over the moon with each passing week that put him closer to his dream. With his latest report to the Hokage about his studies, it was almost a sealed deal that by the end of academy year he would be introduced to a seal master to be apprenticed. Life was good, however there was one problem still hanging over his head. Namely Uchiha Itachi, the scion of Uchiha clan who had been a constant companion of his for the last few weeks. It was not like the Uchiha heir treated him badly, it was actually the opposite. Uchiha Itachi was trying to be his friend, or at least he thought that was what the older boy had been attempting in the last few weeks. Naruto eyed the Uchiha who had occupied his favorite haunt, namely the branches of the Yujo no Ki. The tree had become a sacred monument of Kanaha but the Sandaime allowed him to use the said tree, as long as he took a good care of it. The tree was so old it was imbued by Hashirama's chakra, and those who knew the man would have felt it. It was actually one of the reasons why they allowed him to use the precious monument, hoping to calm the biju and lessening the risk of escape. Fortunately for them it works somewhat, but not for the reasons they suspect. Kurama didn't like the tree but it soothed him. Not because of Hashirama's chakra but because he inherited his ancestor's body thus to Biju, Hashirama's tree had some sort lingering scent of their creator. Like how a child would feel safe and comforted by something with their mother's scent. Um, good afternoon Uchiha-san. He rarely called someone with their proper honorifics, since to him it was a sign of unfamiliarity. He was still wary of the Uchiha but he was willing to give Itachi the benefit of doubt. After all it was partially thanks to Itachi that he got a chance to prove himself. Just call me Itachi. The prodigy suggested as Naruto pushed himself up to sit on the branch. You can add senpai if you insist on calling me with honorifics. Naruto nodded hesitantly, okay. Itachi senpai. For some reason he couldn't comprehend why Itachi started visiting the Yujo no Ki around same time he did. There were not much words exchanged between them. Itachi would come out of nowhere, greet him politely then ask about his day in the academy. Greetings he would return with a curt nod and same amount of politeness. Eventually, the Uchiha Sion started bringing him treats, and not just candy kind but Japanese sweets like Dango, Yukan, Machi, etc. Naruto couldn't recall just when Itachi started sitting beside him in the same branch of Yujo no Ki, eating Japanese sweets and drinking green tea. Unless Itachi was on mission he always arrived at the same time in the afternoon at 4 p.m., and only stays for 20 minutes tops. The topics of their conversations were light and would shift from the weather to the taste of sweets and exchange of greetings. It was like they're maintaining some sort of status quo. A status quo both Naruto and Kurama were running out patience for, especially when Tori not so subtly implied that the Umbu squad allowed Itachi to keep him company whenever he visited the tree. Apparently they were worried about his lack of friends, and thought Itachi would be good for him. The Uchiha heir had a younger brother Naruto's age, and while Itachi was four years older than him, he too was still considered a kid like Naruto. He was also a prodigy, and they thought he could relate to Naruto. They arranged for him to have a play dates with Uchiha Itachi. Imagine that. Kurama was throwing tantrums on his cage, and demanded him to stop visiting the dem tree. Naruto pointed out they had no choice, because unless Kurama could think of a reasonable excuse to give to Tori, it would be too suspicious for someone as lonely as he was to reject company. Not to mention Naruto somewhat felt guilty for his behavior towards the young heir in their first encounter. In short there was no way out for him but to endure the play dates. At the start of third week of their somewhat awkward afternoon routine, Naruto found the Uchiha heir waiting for him in the same branch again. As usual the Uchiha was sitting on the branch in a lotus position, a small package of sweets and a thermos of green tea by his side. He looked as serene as ever and was patiently waiting for Naruto's arrival. 
It made Naruto wonder if this guy didn't have better things to do. Wasn't he a newly recruited Umbu? Then again, he was part of Chori's squad, so accompanying Naruto was probably part of his job. He could always appreciate a company, but not from an enigma like Itachi. He couldn't put a finger on what kind of person Itachi was, and he wondered if he wanted to know the Uchiha at all. Good afternoon Naruto-kun. Naruto nodded hesitantly, Itachi-senpai, were you waiting for me? He asked as he pushed himself to stand on the thick branch. Itachi nodded, yes, I wish to speak to you. It's important. Naruto was not used to feeling surprised. He was the one who always takes everyone by surprise after all. Then again this was the famed prodigious scion of Uchiha, he thought that he would be the one to confront Itachi to know the older boy's true objectives in approaching him but Itachi beat him to it. What would you like to talk about? Naruto asked politely. You don't have to be so formal with me Naruto-kun, you're even less formal with Hokage-sama than you are to me. Itachi pointed out sternly. Naruto shrugged, fine senpai, but I am still at a loss as to why you even want to talk with someone like me. It is someone like you that I want to talk with. Itachi replied swiftly. The Jinchuriki raised an eyebrow at Itachi, like what? You're someone who has seen how foolish humans become when consumed by hatred. Itachi told the younger boy bluntly. Naruto's eyes went wide as he suddenly stood, and then he unconsciously took a step back from Itachi. Then he burst to a fit of laughter, wow. Nice one, senpai. You have a flair for theatrics. Is it an Uchiha art? Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Naruto continued to forcibly laugh. Ha 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 ha. HN. This is getting ridiculous. What this guy is up to. I heard that, this Uchiha is sharp damn it. Karama cursed. Don't let him to take the reins in this conversation, or better yet, ditch him. The Biju suggested helpfully. He groaned inwardly, I will look too suspicious if I did it again. Better get him to spill now than dragging it on. Whatever I will take a nap, go learn how to deal with an Uchiha by yourself but keep your head where it belongs. And with that Karama went back to sleep, keeping an eye open just in case his Jinchura key screwed up. Naruto snapped at the older boy, get to the point. Screw subtlety. Mind games are not my forte. I am seven. He shouted at Itachi, pointing an accusing finger at the Uchiha's scion. I am not playing mind games with you Naruto-kun. Itachi assured the younger boy. Naruto slumped back to his sitting position, fine. I just don't have the patience for talking in circles. The young Jinchuriki stated with a huff, are you implying that I know why they hate me? Now it was his turn to be as blunt as a rampaging rhino, giving the Uchiha a taste of his own medicine. Itachi's eyes widened for a moment before he schooled his stoic face back. I see. It seemed Naruto had found out about his Jinchuriki status from some source. Then again it was not that much a stretch of the imagination since wherever went, whispers about demons and the Cuba followed the child like a plague. Naruto had an aptitude for Fuinjutsu, a branch of study that requires perceptiveness, so it won't be impossible for the child to put two and two together. Especially once he learned about the applications of Fuinjutsu, Sealing demons after all was one of the first objectives in the creation of Fuinjutsu. The blonde snorted, what did you see now, I wonder. He gritted his teeth, so I am right, you just wanted to confirm that. The majority of village already distrusts him, it would seem that this person was just another in that already long list. What else is new, Naruto thought sarcastically. Itachi flinched inwardly, his lips curved down. I mean no harm Naruto could. He stated sternly, at this point you must have understood the basic theory of Fuinjutsu, and villagers are never subtle to show their animosity towards you. I wanted to know what you would do about it. Naruto glared at the Uchiha air, if you're afraid that I am going to do something stupid as taking revenge on them, you needn't worry, rest assured, the occasional prank is as far as I would go. He waved his hand in negative, as far I'm concerned, hating them back is not going to make me happier. He gritted his teeth as his eyes closed, I will just sink to their level. Itachi looked at Naruto with an unreadable expression, but there was an unmistakable spark of gratitude and admiration in his eyes. That's, very wise of you. This boy hadn't even lived through war, 
or witnessed countless lives lost as those left behind mourned their passing. But Naruto understood the misplaced hatred the villagers have, that they wanted someone to blame on for their loss, and he understands that returning their hatred would just make the pain last longer, and in doing so the wounds that everyone kept in their hearts would never mend. The Jinshuriki snorted, I am no saint though, I believe life is easier when you take it in stride. He gritted his teeth, but that doesn't change the fact that they want to make my life as miserable as they could, so I am reasonably wary of anyone who approaches me. The Chin entitled his head to the side, and then he sighed. I hope so far I have done nothing that could make you think I hate you for your burden. He drawled calmly. Naruto shook his head, look Itachi Senpai. I don't know why you keep me company for the last two weeks, and I am torn between being grateful and terrified of you. But I... Itachi opened his mouth to refute. Naruto cut him off, no. Don't you understand? I am aware of your clan's position right now. Itachi blanched at that, which is why I am reasonably wary of you. Itachi paused as he contemplated Naruto's statement, and then after a beat he replied. You're right. Naruto looked at the older boy incredulously, you just, accepted it? Just like that? Yes. Itachi nodded, you're right, it's inevitable to be wary of a member of clan with a traitorous history. To be honest I have to say that it's wise of you to be wary of us, especially because of what you hold. His blue eyes couldn't get wider as he stared at Itachi with a mix of disbelief and astonishment. He shook his head, I can't believe you just approved of my paranoia concerning your clan, but before you get any ideas, no, I have nothing against the Uchiha clan personally. It's just... Could you talk with it? Itachi asked with a voice that tinted with curiosity. Naruto glared at the Uchiha, if I say yes, are you going to think I am possessed and report me to Hokage Iken? Itachi shook his head, I remember how its chakra feels, if you're possessed I am sure I can tell. Then after a beat he added, I promise I will not report this conversation to Hokage-sama, unless you give me your consent. Naruto sighed in relief, thanks, but it's him not it. He corrected, then he eyed Itachi who raised an eyebrow at him cynically. You're a shinobi and yet you tell me you will keep my secret from Ji-chan if I ask you. Just like that. Naruto asked in disbelief. The Uchiha nodded, you have your reasons to keep it a secret, and you have no intention to harm our village in spite of your suffering because of them, you have right to keep your secrets at least. He listed on, and then he added. I have, a brother your age just a few months older than you. Oh. What was he getting at? That night, my parents were out, and I was left behind to tend for my brother. I didn't see the cuba firsthand but I can feel his chakra. Itachi rubbed his temple as the terrible memory resurfaced. The cuba's chakra was dangerous, children were crying the moment they felt it, if Yandai Mesama didn't seal him as soon as he did the casualties wouldn't be just from ninja on the front lines, those who were already physically weak like the elders, pregnant mothers, infants, at that point they would have died just from exposure, including my brother. Itachi stood suddenly and bowed to Naruto with respect, that night, everyone was desperate to protect our village, and Kanaha would have been no more if not for your sacrifice. For bearing that burden for all of us and not giving in to hatred, I can't thank you enough. That was the longest sentence Naruto ever heard from Itachi. He knew people who cared for him were grateful for his sacrifice, but Itachi was the first to honestly express that gratitude to him, to say it out loud for him. For once, someone was being plainly honest to him. Maybe Itachi really deserved that benefit of doubt. Naruto rubbed his temple, a smile painted on his lips. I guess, you're really different after all. Itachi raised an eyebrow, I will ask you one thing, and I want you to answer it honestly Itachi Senpai. I will. Itachi vowed. Do you hate him? My tenant. Naruto asked. That was an unexpected query, and it caught him off guard. Do I hate him? Itachi echoed, he never thought Naruto would ask how he feels about the biju who was also the source of the growing distrust towards his clan. To be honest I should hate him, considering that he is the reason my clan is ostracized by our village. However, that's if he really is a natural disaster and was not controlled by my kin to attack Kanaha like they suspected. 
Then again in that situation the Kyuubi is enemy of Kanaha, as one of her shinobi I shall protect her from him out of duty and love for the village, not because of any personal feelings such as hatred. Naruto blinked oolishly, there's nothing that could knock this guy off of his feet huh? But his reason was more believable that way. Well, that's so rational of you Itachi senpai. He admitted then called his tenant mentally. Kurama, sorry for disturbing your nap, but what do you think of him? I heard everything, and while I still don't like the Uchiha or this boy, I have to say he is a lot more logical than any Uchiha I was unfortunate enough to meet. Kurama grunted, unfortunately for him, the village's suspicion towards his clan is not wrong. An Uchiha was the culprit who controlled me years ago. What? Naruto shouted, startling Itachi but the older boy was calm enough not to show it. Naruto covered his mouth as he realized that he accidentally talked to Kurama out loud. Kurama. You didn't tell me that. I thought it's easy to put two and two together, I told you I was controlled. Hashirama is dead, and you know how my previous hosts treated me, of course it's an Uchiha. Well, when you put it that way. Naruto flushed mentally then he looked at Itachi, how the hell he was going to break it to the older boy. It seems, the villagers suspicion towards your clan, eh? Itachi closed his eyes, gritting his teeth. So it's not misplaced. He looked at Naruto, this is actually another question I need the answer from you Naruto-kun, I want to know, if it's really someone from my clan who caused that tragedy. His gaze hardened, could he tell you who it is? Did he recognize anything that we can use to identify the culprit? Wait. Wait. It was the first time Naruto saw Itachi on the brink of losing his composure. Give me time to talk with him please. Itachi flinched guiltily at that as he waited for Naruto to speak again with his biju. Kurama, do you know which Uchiha? Madara. Cubis pat in disgusted tone. Naruto face palmed, Kurama, that better be not your grudge talking. Kurama groaned, then again he had to admit his memory of that night was not the best. He was wearing a mask that only has one hole for a sherry non-eye, and was wearing black cloak. His chakra is foul and full of hatred typical of the Uchiha. If he is not Madara, he might as well be the second coming of the bastard. Kurama muttered scornfully. Naruto nodded, he said the culprit is wearing a mask that only shows his right cherry non-eye, his chakra is full of hatred. Naruto titled his head to the side, he said it's typical for Uchiha for some reason. Itachi swallowed heavily at that, so even the Cuba thinks so, maybe the Uchiha really is a cursed clan. Considering his long-standing grudge against the Uchiha, you shouldn't take it too seriously. Naruto said bluntly before he could stop himself, Itachi eyed him curiously. Eh I mean, at least I can say that you're not a bad person Itachi senpai. Thank you Naruto-kun. Itachi muttered solemnly. Naruto nodded hesitantly, you're welcome, and I guess I should start blaming this guy or something. He shook his head. I doubt he is even in the village right now though since my tenant would have been throwing tantrums more often if he ever feels the guy anywhere even near Kanaha. And unless that guy had a legitimate reason to cause so much destruction. Naruto gave himself a mental shake, he already had enough on his plate for today, for now he had to survive and stay sane, that was a hard enough task. Itachi rubbed his throbbing cranium, there went his plan to find the culprit and hand the bastard over to Hokage-sama to regain Kanaha's trust. This is so messed up. He concluded wearily. I'm starting to think that every time a truth comes up it's bound to be a mess. Naruto muttered sardonically, So, what are you going to do now that you have learned the truth you wanted, Itachi-senpai? He asked curiously. For the first time since Naruto knew Itachi Uchiha, the prodigy looked really lost. I don't know. He admitted honestly, How do you deal with this Naruto-kun? You're asking me? Naruto asked back incredulously, I told you, I just take it all in stride I guess, and work hard for the best. Even if the villagers don't like me any better than before, my life is starting to look up. I now have something to pursue, to live up to the legacy of my clan, everyone I care about could be proud of the present me now that I am no longer a failure. Itachi chuckled softly at that, earning a raised eyebrow from the blonde. What's so funny? Itachi shook his head wearing an apologetic look on his face as he realized that he might have offended the younger boy. Pardon me, but it's just, 
From what I gathered you are far from being a failure, both as a human, and as a Jinchuriki. He stated firmly, I haven't met any other Jinchuriki, but I have heard that those who are shunned by their people usually grow distant, uncontrollable, and are sometimes even driven to madness. I thought any info on Jinchuriki is closely guarded by each village. Naruto wondered out loud. No secret is safe in war, especially when it comes to full-scale wars like the Shinobi Wars. Itachi said solemnly. Naruto eyed Itachi skeptically, I see, so I am pretty stable by Jinchuriki standards. He asked curiously. If half of the things I heard about what other villages have to deal with their Jinchuriki are right, I have to say Kanaha is very lucky to have you. Itachi said honestly. On his last mission he worked with a Jonin that had a mission involving a short visit to Suna. The senior told Itachi that he had seen a boy around Naruto's age killing someone out of the blue. Nice to know I am appreciated for being sane. Naruto droned, shaking his head in disbelief. He then eyed the older boy dubiously, Itachi is holding out a hand to him, is that what I think it is? It is. Itachi said cordially, his lips curved up to a small and barely noticeable smile as Naruto accepted his hand. This is the start of a very unlikely and awkward. Naruto trailed off but the smile on his face betrayed his feelings. Friendship. Itachi finished. But I am sure the awkwardness will wear off with time. Naruto moaned, great, do I have to deal with you rationalizing everything all the time from now on? Itachi nodded, someone has to be a voice of reason Naruto-kun. I am sure I will appreciate that. Naruto said with a grin, ignoring Kurama who lamented the inevitable and how they were going to regret this one day. Perhaps the Yajo no Ki was really more than just a monument, and under that tree's blessing he gained his first friend. H.N. Oh. The famous H.N. of the Uchiha. Naruto chirped, rolling his eyes. By the way speaking of your clan Itachi Senpai, the Uchiha is a clan of fire breathers right? He nodded, yes. Itachi answered. Why? Naruto grinned from ear to ear, perfect. Is there anyone in your clan that you think would volunteer to be an experimental subject? You mean, stupid enough to be a guinea pig for your demonstrations which might involve explosions among other things? Itachi rephrased in stoic tone. Naruto's left eye twitched, and here I tried to make it sound humane. H.N. The blonde Jinchuriki face palmed, how Uchiha of you. He complimented theatrically. Three days later. Uchiha Shisui didn't know what to think when Itachi asked for help in some sort of mock spa to demonstrate some new shinobi products. His younger cousin was a genius, and he'd also like to think himself as one, even though he may not be of Itachi's caliber, but most of the time even he couldn't understand Itachi's train of thought. Then again his favorite cousin was just that special. Sure. He answered without second though. What kind of stuff we're going to do a demo for? High quality seals. Was Itachi's curt answer. One hour later Shisui had one opinion of the tags the blonde boy generously gave him, awesome stuff. This is the fire seal ever. He exclaimed while looking at the cross-shaped burn mark on the ground. They were in training ground 22, which consisted of rocky ground that was the typical terrain found in earth country. Naruto stared at the Uchiha, wondering if this was a mutated Uchiha or an adopted one judging from how an Uchiha-like he acted. Itachi in the first glance was a typical Uchiha though one could say that he is actually a bit off as an Uchiha. Shisui was even weirder, and so carefree. Then again, so far all his info on how Uchiha were supposedly like came from Kurama. Um thanks. He said awkwardly. I am glad to hear that. Deep inside he wanted to hoop at the praise, but decided to against it in front of a stranger like Shisui. Shisui raised an eyebrow at the socially awkward child, acting mature and polite that didn't fit for someone his age. How unlike the little Sasuke who would have been beaming with glee when praised. No wonder you're Itachi's new friend, you're as awkward as he is. Pardon me? What did you say just now? Naruto raised an eyebrow. The oldest Uchiha in vicinity stared at the blonde in disbelief, then looked at his younger cousin. What did you do Itachi? He said pardon me, him. A kid as old as Sasuke-chan. Itachi frowned at his cousin, pardon me. He echoed, what makes you think it's my fault? 
The said cousin scoffed, well, kids Naruto Chan's age are supposed to hoop and grin when praised. Chan. Naruto drawled in an indignant tone. Itachi face palmed while Shisui was grinning from ear to ear. The younger Uchiha could tell where his cousin's train of thought was going, Shisui was trying to get Naruto to show his real personality. Itachi knew Naruto always put his guard on whenever he meets a stranger, acting polite, stiff and distant. Unless he was pressured like what Itachi did to him, Naruto won't show even a shred of his real personality. Especially since Shisui was supposed to be Itachi's sparring partner to field test his seals, to Naruto Shisui was some just sort of business partner. Yes Naruto-chan. Shisui was nodding sagely, you're, seven right? So you're Naruto-chan, you're even shorter than little cousin Sasuke. And here I thought he was a midget. The use of past tense wasn't lost on Naruto as the blonde boy struggled to keep his temper in check. Who did he call a midget? How dare he? Naruto roared inwardly but all he said in reality was, I see. No, he did not see, at all. In his mindscape Naruto was throwing a tantrum in front of Kurama's cage, much to the fox's amusement. I almost thought that you've really growing up, it's a relief to see a small insult like that could still get on your nerves so easily. Kurama. The fix opened one eye, yeah. Do you know any methods to grow taller? He asked hopefully. I guess. Kurama answered curtly, go drink lots of dairy products and eat in high protein stuff. As usual Kurama opted give him advice in a single sentence and hoped his host could figure out the rest. It always worked anyway. <laughs> Fine Kurama. As he finished his mental conversation which lasted for no longer than few seconds Naruto turned to Itachi, raising an eyebrow asking a silent question, how he could stand Shisui. Which was replied by a shrug by the Uchiha air, translated as he grew used to it. Shisui's left eyebrow was twitching dangerously as he watched the silent exchange, I can't believe you, Itachi. You corrupted a kid like Naruto-chan. He shouted indignantly, pointing an accusing finger at the stoic boy. Itachi face palmed, Shisui, be quiet. Naruto decided to copy Itachi's strategy, just tolerate Shisui's antics before his hair got prematurely gray. He cleared his throat, Hokage-sama is coming soon. Do you need more time to experiment with the seal? Would you like me to explain how it works again? He asked in a solemn tone. Itachi nodded, maybe we should wait for Hokage-sama and the seal master, that way you won't have to repeat it later. Oh, I guess that would be good. Naruto agreed with a nod. Shisui titled his head to the side, curiously eyeing the stack of tags on the wooden stump that Naruto used as a table. His eyes were drawn to ball-shaped bomb with seal array and kanji for Hikari on it. Hey Naruto-chan, you didn't explain that tag to us. It's a new flash tag right? He pointed at the flash bomb. Naruto shook his head fervently, don't even think about it Shisui-senpai. He warned the cheerful Uchiha, I have yet to test that flash bomb properly, and I don't want anyone especially Jujutsu users like you to be blinded by the end of the day. He shuddered mentally. Maybe inventing that flash bomb was not the best idea, but Kurama was very adamant about it, in case they ran to that bastard Uchiha who controlled him again. Shisui blinked when he saw Itachi scoop the three small round bombs and hand it to Naruto, you better keep it with you then before my dear cousin gets any ideas. The onyx-eyed shinobi muttered. Oi. Naruto sweat dropped as he put the bombs back to his backpack, both of them ignoring Shisui's indignant shouts. Thank you Itachi-senpai. It's better to be safe than sorry. Then he turned to Shisui, and I told you to keep it down cousin. Itachi said in chiding tone. I am older than both of you. Shisui reminded them. Naruto's eyes widened in faked shock, you are. I keep forgetting that myself. Itachi admitted, his voice devoid of emotion but the slight shake of his shoulders gave away his mirth. He certainly didn't act his age Naruto could. Shisui moaned, great. Now there are two smart asses I have to deal with. Shisui, mind your language. Itachi chided him, you're the one who called him Naruto-chan, and yet you use such language around him. The curly-haired Uchiha pouted, I know. Shisui huffed, Sasuke-chan is my favorite cousin now, and you're the new least favorite cousin. Right under Teka. Shisui exclaimed triumphantly. Itachi nursed his throbbing cranium 
Shisui. Of all people he put him below that Teka? Their cousin who was five years older, but just recently promoted as a Chunin. He had been glaring daggers at them since the last exam because Shisui's team gave Teka's problem in second round and on the third round Itachi defeated him in less than ten minutes. Uchiha prodigy or not, Teka's pride was severely crushed in being defeated by a ten-year-old kid. Yeah. Teka. That Teka. Shisui howled. Shisui. Itachi said in berating tone. The cheery Uchiha looked really happy boasting that Itachi was below this Teka person, maybe a stuck-up cousin of theirs. And for once Itachi looked really insulted by the arrangement. HMHM. Ha ha ha. Both Uchiha stopped as they stared at Naruto, the blonde Jinchuriki was laughing, his eyes closed but they could see a glimmer of bright azure under golden eyelashes that shone with delight. Naruto hunched over as holding his stomach, his lips curved up to a wide grin as he tried to keep his laughter in control but light chuckles still escaped him. Ha ha. Naruto cleared his throat, flushing a bit red on his cheeks. Um, sorry. I. The next thing he knew, Shisui had glumped him. Gosh, it's like seeing the mini Itachi losing his composure. Shisui cackled mischievously, lifting Naruto up enthusiastically, earning a yelp from the blonde. How see you? His sentence was cut short by a kick on his face. Gah. Naruto didn't know what possessed him, but he had acted on instinct. The moment someone he still dubbed as stranger went too familiar and had gone as far as hugging him, he kicked said person. And then he ran to the only familiar person nearby and tried to hide. He froze when he realized what he had done, and wondered if Shisui would be angry. Unexpectedly Shisui burst to a fit of laughter, Oh my god Itachi! He is hiding behind you. He is shy. Itachi looked at Naruto who looked ready to curl up to a ball and decided he had to save the younger boy from further unintentional humiliation by Shisui. I think that's enough from you, don't tease him Shisui. You know who he is, and how villagers treat him. Shisui stiffened at the reprimand. He is not used to, someone he just met getting overly familiar with him. Not to mention hugging him, Itachi added on his mind. He remembered before their conversation, Naruto was very skittish around him, and that he had to approach the boy with caution. Shisui looked apologetic as he crouched down so his eyes were in Naruto's level. I am sorry Naruto-chan. Bad habit of mine. Naruto titled his head to the side as he contemplated what the Uchiha said. He nodded slowly, I am sorry for overreacting to, um. Shisui Senpai. Even so he was still unwilling to leave his comfort zone, namely behind Itachi's legs. Why was his paranoia was eating at him this much? God. Being cautious was one thing, paranoia was making him crazy. He rolled his eyes inwardly when Kurama told him that if being paranoid could get him to live for another day, it was worth it. Kurama had almost zero concern regarding quality of his host's life, then again considering his life for the last few centuries. No problem Naruto-chan. Shisui assured him, laughing at the sight of Naruto's strained smile that didn't match the throbbing vein on his temple. Naruto-kun. Two Uchihas and one Uzumaki turned to see the Hokage approaching, smiling genially at them. Naruto's eyes were briefly drawn to a man who walked a few steps behind the Sandaime. He was probably in his mid to late thirties, a soft smile in his face made him appear to mild-mannered, curly dark brown hair that parted on the left and eyes of the same color framed by a square glasses. He wore a black kimono and a white haori with kanji for fun on his right and left sleeves. They bowed in respect to their village leader, Hokage-sama. The Hokage returned it with curt nod, I see you have become friends with Itachi and Shisui, Naruto-kun. The old Kage didn't even bother to conceal his relieved sigh, earning a puzzled look from the blonde boy. Then he turned to the man who stood a few steps behind him, this is Aizen Saushik, the current head of the Fun division of Kanaha. Naruto looked at the gentle-looking man, rather than looking like a shinobi he looked like a scholar. Then again you could never judge a shinobi from his slash her looks, most of the time at least. Aizen smiled genially at the blonde, leaning down so he could look at Naruto in the eye. Hello Naruto-kun, I am Aizen Saushik and I will be your teacher. The young Jinchuriki tried his best to smile, that is if I can impress you with my meager skills Aizen-san. He reminded the seal master modestly. Aizen shook his head, 
Nonsense, I have seen your research notes and I am very impressed. Then he looked at the Sandime, after studying those, I don't think I'm going to let anyone else get their hands on him. Sarutobi chuckled softly, eager to utilize the potential of a young talent Aizen. Itachi didn't know why but his instincts told him to be wary of Aizen Saushik. He had rarely seen anyone from the Fune Division because most of them spend a majority of their career in their headquarters to maintain Kanaha's barrier and other Fuin Jutsu defenses that the Shodaima's wife left for Kanaha. While they were an important part of Kanaha's defense force, they were relatively weak compared to other divisions when it comes to physical strength. They mostly do paperwork like the Chunin secretaries at the Hokage Tower which is why it is easy to consider them to be more like scholars than shinobi. Frontline seal masters were rare, and as rare as they were, the level of mastery of most of them was sketchy. Not everyone could juggle between research and combat practice, and attempting few injutsu in battle was quite a feat even as support. Kanaha currently only had Jiraiya and Kakashi and while a number of Jonin may have a little above average skill in the obscure art, None of them could use more Fuinjutsu save Kuchi Yase in the heat of battle. While Naruto with his Jinchuriki status was more suitable for the front lines, his lineage would make Kanaha's upper echelon keep him in check. He was an Uzumaki, a clan with unparalleled skill in Fuinjutsu. While Kanaha could use Uzumaki Mito's legacy from generation to generation, no seal masters including Jiraiya were capable enough to modify, improve, or fix the seals, it was an untouchable work of art of the highest caliber in Fuinjutsu. If there's anyone with potential to create seals of that caliber, it would be Uzumaki Naruto. He could see what Kanaha wanted, and what the Hokage would do to give it to her. Itachi ran through the rocky ground, hopping from one rock to another. Shisui was ahead, and both of them were well aware that they were heading to a clearing. Shisui's grin was a signal that Itachi should start attacking. The prodigy jumped, his sherry non came to life as four shuriken-shaped objects were held between his fingers. It looked like normal shuriken at a first glance but it was made of ceramic not metal, and the tips were not sharp but tapered, a rune carved from each tip to the center which held, Hanu, engraving he threw it with admirable precision, two of them passing Shisui and as soon as both landed on the ground the seal carved on it glowed briefly before cross-shaped fire sprouted from its tips, forming a wall of fire. Whoa! Shisui yelped as he was trapped in a square formation of Katon no Jujikafuen, fire element cross seal, the older Uchiha grinned as he backed away from the fire only to stop on his tracks the moment another wall of fire erupted and blocked his escape route. Shisui shunshined away from the cage of fire with ease and reappeared ten feet away from his original position. His sherry non eyes widened as he bent backward to avoid another of the same seal carved projectile which was this time already active as it cut through the air. Shisui could feel the intense heat on the tip of his nose as the he missed the flaming current of the projectiles by two inches as they wheezed past him. The Sandime smiled bemusedly at the two Uchiha, it seemed that they enjoyed their fiery spar. Then again the Uchiha were always a clan of pyromaniacs, his sensei used to tell him. That's enough. Itachi. Shisui. Shisui seemed unsatisfied at cutting the experiment short but Itachi shot him a warning glance. The two Uchiha walked back to where the spectators of the spar sat, under an adenium tree which was the only tree that grew in that training ground. Aizen Saushik clapped a few times, a gentle smile firmly in place. That's prodigious, as expected of the Uchiha clan. Naruto-kun only told you how to activate the seal and its functions, but you figured out how to apply it in battle yourself. Itachi nodded, thank you for your kind words Aizen Dono, the last seal I used. Cat on Nojo Jikofun seems very useful to corner opponents and can be used as a surprise attack. He turned to Naruto as he fished out the last shuriken-shaped device from his pouch, its design makes it convenient to use but... Naruto-kun, why it's made of ceramic? He asked curiously, though he was sure it won't break since Naruto used durability seals on it too. Naruto sighed at that, well, for one... I am no smith and I don't have that kind of money to purchase customized shuriken from a blacksmith. Aizen nodded in understanding, I see, is it possible to make this seal work for other elements? Naruto looked thoughtful as he contemplated the query, probably. He decided, I asked Itachi Senpai since these seals would work better for ninja with fire affinity. I can make this seal to be general so what comes out would be the user's affinity. Though not for earth, Water may still work but it's easily more applicable for fire, wind, and lightning. 
He shook his head, that's only in theory though. The Hokage nodded in approval, how about the other seals you used? Itachi-kun. Shisui-kun. Shisui titled his head to the side as he fished out a tag from his pouch. This one. He glared at Itachi. Made my feet stick to the ground, very good for trapping unless you face an earth element ninja. He eyed his bare feet in distaste, though if it only get to our feet, anyone can pull lizard style escape. Itachi shrugged, I have to say that while Shisui is correct, those who are caught unaware would be an easy target even for a few seconds. This seal, Gom Jimen Fun, Sticky ground seal, is good, though the range is poor as it only works on a 3 feet radius from the seal. Naruto sighed at that, actually it depends on how much chakra you put on it, though to be safe I put a limiter symbol on it so that it gets sticky enough to trap people in that small range and last longer. He informed them, it's not an elemental seal anyway, it's a stronger version of the tree climbing exercise on a seal. The old Kage muttered in an amused tone. So much room for improvement, especially since. The ground looks the same after you applied the seal on it, so unless you have a jujitsu to see chakra, you can't tell there's a trap. Aizen nodded in agreement, this seal works instantaneously the moment it touches the ground, you don't have to stick it, and it's reusable too. He eyed the tag, most of us instinctively move with a chakra boost, thus any body parts where chakra is focused would stick to this like magnet. The blonde boy nodded. I recommend it for trap use, but it needs a lot of chakra to last more than few minutes. But it won't be a problem once someone is trapped in its range, the seal would be powered by the captive's chakra. Naruto informed them, speaking of the poor range, I can provide you one with wider range but you need more chakra to make it sticky and last longer until it catches your opponent. He muttered as he rummaged through his backpack, and here is the last one I have for today. He muttered and pulled out a flash tag. This one is a flash bomb, but it can last more than 5 minutes and comes in 7 colors. Eh, no. He shook his head at the look Sandime shot him. It's not for pranking. We have to use sunglasses to use it for sure. Shisui quipped with a grin, he was referring to Dujitsu users in general. And a warning that it's not to be used in anywhere near the Uchiha and Hyuga compounds. I concur. Itachi drawled. Sarutobi smiled at that. It seemed Naruto was still a prankster at heart. I will get my Umbu and Oinin to test it. If it works effectively, I would want that for them. Naruto wisely didn't ask how they're going to use it, he just hoped he would never find out if any missing nin that ends up blind because of it. Of course Hokage-sama. He bowed in respect, earning a sad look from Sandaime that disappeared the moment he raised his head. Sarutobi cleared his throat, Aizen has voiced his interest in your talent, and I have seen it myself, what you could do with modifying basic seals and simple concepts such as the tree climbing exercise. He pulled a red scroll with golden trimming and the Kanaha symbol and handed it to Naruto. You deserve it Naruto-kun. He said cordially as Naruto accepted the scroll with awe and thinly veiled nervousness. Congratulations, you passed with flying colors. The blonde Jinchuriki held the scroll with trembling hands, while he was confident of his skills he was still in disbelief that he at last gained the acknowledgement he longed for. Thank you Hokage-sama. He bowed in respect to the old Kage then turned to Aizen. It's an honor to learn your art Aizen-san, I will do my best as your student. Aizen smiled genially, I am looking forward to it Naruto-kun, and call me Shishao from now on. Hi Shishao. Naruto obeyed readily. Naruto, Kurama called from the depths of his mind. Yes, Kurama. His biju would rarely be the first to attempt a conversation. I don't trust this man at all. Kurama growled. I see. Naruto chuckled inwardly, I will be careful, I promise. He glanced to his back, where he could see Itachi's eyes had narrowed at Aizen only to gaze back to him. He smiled reassuringly to Itachi then nodded. You're not the only one my friend. Bah. Kurama snorted in disgust. March 7, seven years after Yondaima's death. Uzumaki Naruto graduated from the academy to be apprenticed under Aizen Saushik, which marked as a significant turning point in his life. Chapter 5, Fifth Legacy Fifth Legacy, Halcyon Days You shall not make an Uzumaki repeat themselves for the third time when it comes to Fuinjutsu. You nod, 
shut up, and do as they said before they tear you a new mouth for back-talking them in their expertise. Seal masters when dealing with an Uzumaki. Aizen was a pleasant person, at least he painted himself as such. Naruto didn't know why but he, Kurama, and Itachi were instantly wary of the man. In spite of that, he didn't voice a word of protest, when Aizen asked him to move to Fune Division Dormitory. It was just reasonable that a teacher would want his disciple to be contactable any time, and devoted most of their time in their study. Naruto didn't have that much attachment to his old apartment anyway, at the very least the new place won't be devoid of life. And oh boy, how wrong he was. The dormitory was located in a tower, on the west side of North Forest, apparently it was pretty close to the city. The dormitory room or rather an apartment looked pretty much the same as his old apartment, and insultingly larger with queen-size bedroom, the bathroom, and kitchen were inside too. The difference was, it looked so bare and needed personal touch. How do you like it Naruto-kun? Aizen asked as he led the blonde boy to explore his new home. Naruto bobbed his head, I like it. It's bigger than my old place. Which mean it would feel emptier too with only him. But. I always thought a dormitory room supposes to be small. Not when it's for the division leader. Aizen informed him. Oh. Naruto paused then stared at the older seal master in shock. Oh, I thought I am going to live alone, so this is your place Shisu. Aizen shook his head, I have my own house, it's ten minutes walk from the R Tower, I would love to let you live in my home. The Howry clad shinobi sighed, but higher ups insist that you've to live here. Apparently he was not the only cautious one of Aizen, which made him wonder why they let Aizen to keep his position at all. He had not heard of Aizen clan, which meant the clan was minor so it was no reason to fear political backlash or anything alike. Unless upper echelon of their village still trusted the man, and they wanted Naruto to be where they could keep their eyes on. It annoyed him, most of his life had been trailed by Umbu. How much monitoring they needed. Naruto nodded, but I am not sure I should have this place. Nonsense. Aizen drawled, you're used to have a place with bathroom and kitchen Naruto-kun, so Hokage-sama deemed it prudent you deserve the same luxury even in dormitory. This place is never used by me, it's better be in use than gathering dust. The blonde boy smiled at that, I promise I will take a good care of this place Shisu. He beamed. And by the way. Can I paint it orange? He asked cheerfully. Aizen sweat dropped at him, eh. This is not private property Naruto-kun though I think you could pick a more neutral color, a very pale orange maybe? I will ask permission from Hokage-sama for you. Really Shisu? Naruto beamed at the offer, thank you. He thanked his master. Aizen just smiled as he bid Naruto goodbye and left the boy to attend his business in his office. Naruto waved at retreating Aizen cheerily. See you around Shisu. As soon as Aizen was out of his sight he closed the door and his eyes narrowed. That man is full of bullshit. Kurama growled. Ask Hokage-sama for you. You could ask that old man yourself. He sounds like he is going to do a favor for you. Naruto sighed as he began to unload books from the box. Well, kids normally won't notice when adult is bullshitting them. And he seems to be set on making me fond of him. The demon fox snorted, on his dream but still. Do you think this is a wise decision? Haven't you learned that naivete could get you killed? The blonde boy clenched his teeth, his finger pushed the book to straighten the row. Hiragijiaiken, the man who changed my life, in spite of everything I owe him. I can't hate him, not when he gave up his life research for me. I don't know what he was thinking but should I care? He wondered in somber tone. To us seal master, what he has given to me is like a shinobi giving up both of his hands. Can't argue with you there, but still. We were so lucky he didn't mess you up. Hi, but you know Hiragi Jiaiken is probably not in this world anymore, regardless of his original intention to me is good or bad. Kurama had told him that the man had received a full blast of exposure to Kurama's demonic chakra. A normal human would have went mad and committed suicide or died an instant. I owe him, that's all in it. As far as I concerned, he probably... Naruto trailed off as he put the last book on the shelves. The only human who ever gave me something without nothing on him in return. Hokage's kindness to him might be out of genuine love to him like a grandfather would their grandson, but in the same time it was also a duty. 
He was the Jinchura key of Kanaha after all. Even this opportunity to further his study was partly for Kanaha. Torai cared about him but the Umbu's protection was a duty too. And Itachi, he was not sure but when it comes to the older boy he could safely say their friendship based on their understanding of each other's standing. Itachi was the prodigy who shouldered his clan's pride on his young shoulder, while he was aware of how his clan slowly descended to the path of no return. While Naruto was a sacrifice for the village and betrayed by them, ironically it was after they knew what he had done for them. They were both aware of how foolish human could be once consumed by hatred. Sometimes Naruto wondered if he was indeed a prodigy, a genius as they called him. If what it takes to be a genius was to know why everyone else was idiot, it was both a curse and blessing. A blessing to know you are not an idiot and a curse to know you are living among idiots. He wisely discarded the thought, because it seemed Itachi was rubbing off on him. Uchiha compound. Uchiha Sasuke could shamelessly admit he loved his big brother more than he did his parents. It was ironic that while the whole clan pressured him to be as good as Itachi, his big brother was the one who protected him from the said pressure. It was really stressful for a young boy like Sasuke to live under the shadow of such a talented older brother, and he sought comfort from his brother and mother whenever he could. His brother was always busy since he started working as an umbu, so every second he could get from Itachi was precious. He went home in hurry because it was the day Itachi promised to let Sasuke watching his training with Kunai and Shuriken. Much to his disappointment Itachi was not home yet. Kasan. Sasuke called his mother who was busy unloading her groceries from plastic bag. Where's Nisan? He asked impatiently as he pulled one of the chair and pushed himself up to sit. Mikato paused her work, oh, he went to Munechika-san's place, he should be back soon. He has been away for two hours, it shouldn't take so long. Sasuke blinked oolishly as he processed what his mother said, Munechika-san. I thought Nisan just restocked his weapon supply last week. Itachi was always took a good care of his weapons, so usually it lasted longer. It didn't make sense his brother needed to buy anything from the blacksmith. The Uchiha matriarch titled her head to the side thoughtfully, well, apparently when he restocked his weaponry last week he also ordered something from Munechika-san and he went to pick it up today. She explained as she finished putting the groceries on their fridge. Oh. Sasuke hummed excitedly, did Nisan ordered some cool weapons? He asked childishly. I did not. Sasuke almost jumped on his seat then turned around to face his big brother. Itachi looked pretty amused by his reaction, judging from small smiled on his lips. Nisan. You startled me. Itachi shrugged, Tadaima. Kasan, Sasuke. He poked Sasuke on the forehead as he walked past, earning a pout from his little brother. More vigilant next time. Itachi lifted his right hand, holding up a plastic bag. Uroshi Basin gave me some anpan and curry bread from their bakery. Mikato smiled at that, she mentally noted to thank the old couple the next time she saw them. That's very nice of them. Sasuke turned to his brother, so what did you get from Munechika-san, Nisan? He asked curiously. You will see it later. Itachi promised with a glint on his eyes. Sajika watched in awe as his brother showed him a custom-made shuriken, which just poofed out from a storage scroll. Unlike normal shuriken the tips were tapered to a diamond-shaped hole, runes carved on its metallic body with an elegantly written for Hano on the center. The next projectile Itachi set beside the custom-made shuriken was, a slip of paper. Itachi chuckled amusedly at Sasuke's confusion, let's see these in action shall we? He said as he led Sasuke to the nearest clearing. The younger brother looked confused when Itachi took out a wooden dummy out of the scroll. Unlike one he saw in training ground this one was not made of hay but wood, which make it look like a puppet. He had seen something alike in bookstore, one that used as model for painter to draw human. This one was big, a head taller than Sasuke. Itachi placed a tag on its head, the tag also had difficult looking rune with four breath in the center. Sasuke couldn't help but gaped when he saw the five feet wooden dummy suddenly came alive and looked like it was running for its life from them. The way it moved was awkward and frantic, and looked more like bouncing instead of running. After it reached certain distance from them it was running in circle around the training ground like a headless chicken. Sasuke was really disturbed by how creepy it looked. I am not sure that's on purpose. 
Itachi was apparently wasn't disturbed by its frantic bouncing, even when Sasuke flinched at the puppet's head 180 degrees turn. Nissan. Sasuke almost whimpered, it's dancing. Itachi only raised an eyebrow when the puppet started dancing ballet, and it was horrendous. Then again the puppet was no Billy Elliot. Sasuke really started to whimper when the said puppet jumped in the air with its hands stretched out like it was trying to fly. If this is his idea of joke, it's really a poor taste. Itachi craned his neck, but it seems to be a workable puppet for practice dummy. The Uchiha prodigy stepped forward before he dived to a full sprint towards his target. From the corner of his eyes he saw his father approached Sasuke, Fugaku had came to watch his training it seemed. He paid the spectators no mind as he threw the custom-made shuriken to the puppet. Fire came alive and encased the shuriken, it looked like a disc of fire cutting through the puppet dodged the coming fiery projectile with jumping high to the air, the legs disturbingly parted in 180 degrees in the midair. However it wasn't fast enough when it jumped so the tip of its feet were torched. Itachi didn't even pause when the puppet landed on its burning feet and started to spin around. Shuriken encased in fire. Fugaku murmured, ignoring his youngest son who at some point had clung to his pants. He couldn't blame Sasuke, the dancing puppet was a pretty disturbing sight for a child. It's like, a more advanced version of our house Enka no Jutsu. Itachi started to corner the puppet with a fire of wall, dodging spinning kick from the burning wooden feet in the process. Interesting. Sasuke gulped, Nissan is so fast. But how that shuriken can sprout fire even though Nissan didn't burn them? He asked curiously. Fuinjutsu. Fugaku answered in solemn tone. The shuriken is imbued with Itachi's fire-natured chakra while the rune functioned to shape and manipulate it to produce the same effect as House Enka no Jutsu. Shisui had told him about the Minato's son and the latest achievement of the budding prodigy of Seal Master, the boy was truly their son. Oh. Fugaku really hoped they could have adopted Minato's son, but that would be soundly rejected by Sandaima and his cronies. He also didn't want to add oil to the fire, considering their position now. While it was true Sherry Nan was probably the only thing left in the world that could control Kyubi, everyone seemed to conveniently forgot his family's relationship with Yondai Mez. He would sooner cut his own hand than letting his clan to harm Minato's family. The village could accuse Uchiha all they wanted, and conveniently forgot that Mikato was Kushina's best friend and he was Minato's childhood friend and second cousin. The latter was not even a public secret, while it was not well known. One of his mother's cousin married Anamikaze and had Minato. Minato's mother had recessive gene of Uchiha and Namikaze was actually an offshoot of Senjo, which was why Minato looked nothing like an Uchiha save the sharp shape of his eyes which was not that noticeable in the first place. Uzumaki Naruto was also very unlikely to develop Sherinan considering Minato married an Uzumaki, a family line which was another offshoot of Senjo, diluting the Uchiha blood even further. Aside of the blood relationship, they also forgot how crushed Minato was when Obito was killed, and how Minato had kneeled in front of him to apologize for his nephew's death. Hatake Kakashi was still alive and breathing was also thanks to Minato. The clan was furious about Kakashi's sherry non, but they honored Obito's last wish. Not to mention Minato didn't need their petty anger on Kakashi while he already had enough on his plate. Even in politics standpoint, without their blood relation thrown in the mix, it didn't make sense for Uchiha to want Minato dead. Minato was the only Hokage after Shodaime who treated them fairly. Fugaku suspected all relationships his family had with Yondaime's was hushed out by Sandaime and his teammates. His blood relation was probably hushed out the moment Minato took his Hokage mantle. None of them noticed that time because war just ended and Kanaha experienced the worst economic crisis since the First Great War. Minato was busy to stabilize their village and getting used to his new position, while Fugaku and police corps were busy to suppress raising criminality in Kanaha's civilian populace. None of them realized what the old cronies did on their back. When he thought of it again it might be not Sandaime, the old man was too busy to grieve over his wife's and Minato's death. His teammates however. Recalling those old fools had time to smear his clan's name in the worst moment possible made his blood boil. They could afford to hate the Jinshuriki in their midst in one of the founding clans, sometimes Fugaku wondered if Kanaha deserved Uchiha and Minato's legacy at all. Fugaku. I am going to name my son, Naruto. 
Minato informed him cheerfully. Fugaku's left eye twitched, what did I tell you about letting Kushina to name your child? Not after that ramen topping of course, I named him after the main character of Jiraiya Sensei's novel. Not a smutty kind of course. Minato informed, looked pretty offended that Fugaka thought Kushina's ramen obsession would make his beautiful wife naming their son after the food. The Uchiha clan head rubbed his temple, even better, the name is from Jiraiya-sama. He is a great shinobi but... Oh come on. My sensei is not that bad. Minato protested. Fugaku snorted, I arrested him three times for this week alone for peeping. Oh okay, he is bad, I admit. Minato swallowed heavily. This is why I want to speak to you initially, the third time he was caught this week, which was this afternoon, my wife and yours were in hot spring for their pregnancy excise. Fugaku growled out. Want to help me kill my arrow sensei? Minato offered generously. Of course. Tosan. Itachi called. Fugaku was snapped out of his thought, his eyes drawn by Itachi's stiff stance and Sasuke who had cowered behind his brother. He had been leaking killer intent when he was lost in memory it seemed. I am fine now Itachi, Sasuke, it's been a hard day. He narrowed his eyes at Itachi. About your new friend Itachi. The older son stiffened. Yes. Cherish him Itachi. He drawled, as my son, you should do better than I did. That Itachi could correct his mistake, and their son's bond won't be severed by negligence like what happened between him and Minato. Itachi was stunned by the order, and marveled if there's no hidden intention in his father's voice. Yes father. He couldn't give Minato's son a family, but he would be damned if he even couldn't give a friend to Naruto. Once he was apprenticed, he was given a new place to call a technical home and a new set of clothes. It was not a shirt or pants he usually wore, but some sort of double-layered kimono which only as long as a normal shirt, the sleeve was long but not wider than normal sleeve like kimono. The outer kimono-like shirt was white with one thick orange stripe on chest part while the inner was orange. The pants was short and came in darker shade of orange. Instead of standard ninja shoes he was given a pair of black jikatabi, traditional Japanese socks. The footwear, felt awkward at first but it was comfortable and he really liked the traditional sock though not the getta since it was too noisy. He liked the softness of their solace. This gave him tactile contact with the ground and lets him use his feet more agilely than rigid soled shoes. He could use it in practice once he learned how to create durability seal for cloth. Karama generously informed him that it looked exactly like clothes Uzumaki Mito gave to her son. Which not surprising since it came from Uzushiagakur, and must had a preservation seal sewn on it. Naruto was not sure what to think when Hokage gave him the clothes but didn't say anything about it other than it was a gift. He sometimes wondered how undeserving he was, that not even a drop of information about his legacy was given to him. He didn't ask for much, a few sentences about Izumaki clan he could find himself in library would be good enough. He wondered why he kept hoping that one day Ji-chan would indulge him at least a little about his legacy, to assure him he was not an unwanted trash nobody wanted. Scrolls. Books. Lots of it. Shisui shook his head as he eyed Naruto's shelves in distaste. No wonder majority of shinobi population thinks you guys from Fune Division are scholars and not ninja. Naruto wondered why Tachi thought bringing Shisui to his place was a good idea. Shisui. The older boy insisted he dropped the honorific with a promise Shisui wouldn't call him Naruto-chan anymore. Put that scroll back, and here I thought Uchiha are clans who value brain over brawl. Shisui raised an eyebrow, so we're smart naturally, but so you know I don't read scrolls to study jutsu. We have instructor and Sherry Nan for that. I think Naruto-kun is talking about how our Sherry Nan helps our fighting style to be efficient, which involves strategic thinking instead of brute force. Itachi joined in after he took another sip of his green tea. The Shuzen expert scoffed, my best record when fighting an enemy ninja is with Shunshining right on my enemy's blind spot and roasted him with a cat on. Just three minutes. Like cup noodle. He boasted proudly. Did you just tell me that? Naruto trailed off, setting your enemy on fire is more effective than your prized jujitsu. Naruto asked incredulously. He huffed. We're pyromaniac at heart. Shisui declared proudly. 
Sherry non tend to make you overthinking in battle, while the simplest solution bring faster result. Which meanwhile Sherry non helps us to predict and counter Nin, Gen, and Tai, it's not efficient without enough brain to back it up so Shisui resort is prone to Shunsen and roast anything in his path. Itachi explained in dead Pantone. Shisui glared at his least favorite cousin, boy. Naruto nodded sagely, I see. No you did not. The older Uchiha growled. Itachi sighed, by the way Naruto kun, I tested the Nanshao Shuriken, burning throwing star, yesterday with that puppet seal you gave me. Naruto's eyes lightened up at that, oh. How is it? Did both work properly? I guess the Nanshao Shuriken works well, as for your puppet seal. The Uchiha prodigy titled his head to the side, define properly. Naruto raised an eyebrow at his fellow prodigy, huh. Twenty minutes later in the nearest training ground Naruto and Shisui watched in horror as the puppet executed 32 fuets and turned before it bounced like a rabbit in heat. Aizen who was watching beside Naruto clapped cheerily. Itachi looked indifferent by the puppet, though if you watched closely you could see his left eyebrow twitched by two millimeters. Shisui regretted drawing Might Guy's face on it, while it was creepy enough when the puppet's face was blank. The thick eyebrow, the eyelashes, and the wide smile made the show look straight from the worse realm of insanity. It was pretty funny at first, Shisui conceded, but now it was just plain creepy and disturbing. The spell of silence hung heavily in the air save Aizen's clapping, it was Shisui who found his voice first. No wonder little Sasuke is traumatized. He murmured, Naruto, even I, have to admit it's not funny. Uchiha Shisui told him in a voice that suggested his brain was broken. Naruto gaped like a goldfish at them and for a moment of broken-mindedness they stared at each other, but... I didn't mean it to do that. That... He stammered, I was just trying to modify standard puppet seal Ryudu and clan used. So it could move more fluidly and not so stiff like one the original clan used on training post. He growled testily. Aizen smiled at his disciple, he looked bemused by the whole ordeal. The puppet did move fluidly now Naruto could. He beamed. Not that kind of fluid. Naruto exclaimed in horror, he was about to correct his teacher but lost control of his jaw when he saw it. The moment the puppet jumped and doing a full leg splits in midair, which put too much strain on its hip joint and its left leg fell out. The puppet landed on its right leg and started to spin again, while its left leg went flying and stuck on the wall, missing Naruto's cheek by one inch. Naruto regained his control as he put his jaw back up. He grabbed the stray leg then threw the leg to, to the puppet with deadly accuracy. The puppet was struck by its own leg on chest part and was sent sprawling to the ground. Naruto then turned his attention at the two dumbfounded Uchiha beside him. Itachi, Shisui. The two Uchihas turned to their attention to the Uzumaki. Burn it. He ordered in commanding tone, it was not a request. Itachi and Shisui didn't know why but for a moment they fear for their life of what Naruto would do if they didn't do as he said. It was Aizen who interrupted their train of thought, Naruto-kun. Don't be so hasty, it's not that bad. Naruto was not convinced, burn it date by yo. He repeated icily, his blue eyes never left the abomination. Aizen was quickly reminded of one thing his late teacher who was lucky enough to know Mito-sama had warned him about Izumaki. There was one warning all seal masters who had ever known an Uzumaki personally would always say. You shall not make an Uzumaki repeat themselves for the third time when it comes to Fuinjutsu, you nod, shut up, and do as they said before they tear you a new mouth for back-talking them in their expertise. Itachi kun. Shisui kun. Quick. Aizen pressed the two Uchihas on. Burn it. Do as Naruto kun said. Itachi and Shisui decided that they didn't want to know why Aizen suddenly started singing different tunes so they went to the puppet in record time and turned it to firewood with Gukaku no Jutsu. Naruto trotted to the fire and threw all identical seal with one on the puppet he had on his person to the fire. Itachi and Shisui looked at the Uzumaki in bewilderment then to the burning puppet in tags. Naruto smiled eerily at the occupant of the training ground, a smile that was known as Uzumaki's trademark smile that said as a sign for flea on sight in the first great shinobi war when an Uzumaki was pissed. Especially when the verbal tick came out from their mouth. He had been pretty confused why Naruto didn't have Uzumaki main family's verbal tick, a tick they spouted when being emotional. 
Uzumakis usually were very emotional when they were young, most calmed down when they reached adulthood and the verbal tick came out only when they were pissed off or excited. They were no natural disaster when pissed even without Biju. We never see this. He decided in resolute voice. We didn't see anything, Dateba yo. He chirped cheerfully. He decided to just pretend that the abomination never exist. The thought in disbelief. But of course no one dared to protest, of course Naruto could. Aizen agreed readily, and Shisui wondered why Sandaima assigned a man without a backbone to tutor a freaking Uzumaki. Actually Shisui worried about nothing, as when it comes to Fuinjutsu, Aizen was a competent teacher. So this symbol represents propagation. Aizen muttered as he expertly finished the last stroke for, Kumo, on the scroll. Aizen's writing was smoother and somewhat had a slight overt flourishes. Unlike Naruto's writing, which was simple, written as precisely as he could and sometimes sloppy because of inexperience. And this is symbol of tranquility which represented by, a meh, rain, blessed shower from the sky. Naruto nodded as he copied the alphabet to his scroll, hmm, why the first layer high level seal that direct chakra used weather. I always wonder why. All seal Naruto had created so far was simpler in nature, while creative the level was only C or D. Aizen had evaluated his skill, and decided it was time to teach Naruto components for higher ranked seal. Naruto had a very strong basic skill, but his experience was limited to lower rank seal like explosion tag and flash tag. Aizen tapped his finger, because high level seal is very volatile most of the time, and while sometimes an unstable seal works it's better to be stable. And for that, we need harmony which is what weather symbol were part of. The nature itself is the personification of harmony, earth. Aizen lowered his hand as his right palm faced the ground. And the sky. His left palm was upward, facing the ceiling of their study room. Azure eyes trailed up and down, absorbing knowledge his teacher gave him like sponge. Harmony. Aizen nodded, hi, our world is made of harmony of sky and earth. He cleared his throat. It's said that the Sage of Sixth Path's greatest technique used the concept of yin and yang, in which he created the world we live in. So, he is a god. Naruto asked curiously, ignoring Kurama's mental snicker because Naruto knew the answer. Close. Aizen corrected, it's not like he created the world from scratch, more like creating the order for the new world with knowledge about chakra. A gift human foolishly abuse with slaughter throughout the century. Kurama growled out, Old man would have turning on his grave if he had won. A wise decision in his part, Kurama thought. Unfortunately I can't argue with that. Naruto thought forlornly. Maybe one day human could escape from this loop. Who knows? Uzumaki-sama. Naruto turned his head to the side, a boy who was Shisui's age was holding a tray of snack and steaming tea. You and Aizen Taijo have been studying for hours. I presume you would like a refreshment. He had short pale sandy blonde hair and grayish blue eyes. His skin was fair, and he had a distinct short eyebrow that almost resembled short tip of brush. He was wearing a dark gray kimono that parted until his chest, his chest, and abdomen were wrapped in bandage. Ah. Takuza-kun. Aizen called in from the corner of his eyes Naruto could tell the slight twitch on his master's eye voiced displeasure that Takuza had clearly put Aizen was below Naruto in status. Naruto always felt nervous whenever Takuza or anyone from the boys' clan, the Shiamitsus were with him when Aizen was in vicinity. Takuza was part of a seal master clan who specialize in weaponized application, meaning they used seals to enhance weapon thus they were also a clan of blacksmith. Shiamitsu clan by any means was not hostile in fact Naruto was pretty unnerved when he was introduced to the rest of the tower member, Shiamitsu clans looked very close to prostrate themselves on the floor on the sight of him. Naruto's paranoia came back three folds when he realized that for unknown reason he was stuck in some sort of political struggle in the tower, between Takuza's clan and Aizen's subordinates. At first he thought he could just mind his business and let them sort the problem themselves. But no, for some reason their problem centered on him. Shiamitsu clan had unofficially assigned Takuza to be Naruto's retainer, and how insistent they were leave no room for argument. The next thing Naruto knew, both side never leave him alone with someone from their opposition. If Naruto was studying with Aizen, Takuza would somehow there to study on his own of bringing refreshment. While it didn't bother him that much, 
He was not used to be the center of attention, especially when Aizen and Takas discreetly glaring at each other. Aizen might be the head of the tower, but apparently he didn't have complete control over everyone especially Shiamitsu clan. Naruto guessed it was like Senju Uchiha thing, since from what read in record clans and families that involved in tower were always the same from generation to generation since Uzumaki Mito's founding of the division. He just hoped it was not centered on him for whatever wacky reason they had other than he was related to their founder, and it won't end up anywhere as badly as Senju Uchiha won. Uzumaki-sama. Takuza chirped. Naruto paused in mid of stirring his tea, ah yes, Takuza? What is it? He had learned to speak very carefully when these two were in the same room. Especially when Aizen had his katana with him, and Takuza had his glove on his belt. No fight broke yet, but it was clear with them carrying it around they were not above using it. Hakure Shiso found the reference scroll you wanted. He informed the blonde boy excitedly, there's a couple of interesting scrolls in our family achieve we think would help in your next project too. Naruto beamed at that, ah I see, then. Aizen chose that moment to cut in, there's sample of grade A ink arrived recently, we should try it. And I am sure in my family achieve we have better reference scroll. Oh, shit. E. Naruto started to sweat under their intense gaze. Aizen seemed like he didn't realize his pleasant mentor mask was slipping whenever Ishiyamitsu was in vicinity. Tomorrow morning I have a training session with Itachi and Shisui. Naruto didn't miss the flinch on Takuza's face when he mentioned his Uchiha friends. It seemed Shiamitsu clan didn't like Uchiha, and Shisui almost kidnapped him so Takuza won't follow them to training ground. Naruto had to beg for Takuza to leave him with the Uchihas, and assured the boy he was completely safe with Itachi and Shisui. Itachi who was the more diplomatic one of the two even offered to swear an oath of protection, which soundly refused by Naruto because Itachi had nothing to prove to his unofficial retainer. Takuza in the end relented, but he still had a glare match with Shisui whenever the two met face to face. From there Takuza's home is closer so I will go to your place first. Takuza nodded happily, on the way back to tower I will walk past Shishou's place, and Shisu usually will be at home around 6 right? Aizen nodded, yes. I will be there then. Naruto caught Takuza looked at him pleadingly and he knew the teen wanted to follow him to Aizen's. Considering he would be in Takuza's before Aizen's, and how the Shiamitsu clan was going to beg for the same thing later. With Takuza. He added reluctantly. Naruto closed his eyes and pretended he didn't hear the snapping sound of calligraphy brush. Yep. It was just the third brush for this week. The next day. You looks like a walking dead man. Shisui commented as he and Itachi walked the blonde to their favorite training ground. Naruto glared at Shisui heatedly, I am sorry if I spent two months indoor. He drawled sardonically, and the stupid politic struggle didn't help. Kami. My whole body feels heavy like lead. Even if other seal masters in the tower likes indoor so much, I honestly don't. After spending a few weeks with Shisui, Naruto could say there's no harm to act like himself. Shisui was too hot-headed and carefree to plot anything traitorous, and his personality made him a pleasant person to be around and a convenient target to butt head with. Shisui lifted his hands in placating gesture, he didn't to be a target for Uzumaki's ire. He would have pity that wooden puppet if it was alive, which is why it was very lucky to be dead. No need to be so pissy Naruto, can't you ask Aizendano to take your lessons outside once in a while? Itachi and Naruto whipped their heads at his direction so fast, that he thought their neck was going to snap. Are you nuts? They asked in disbelief. The Shushin expert raised an eyebrow, eh, what's wrong with my suggestion? I told you I am starting on experimental seal. One I make from scratch. Naruto informed him, doing it outside is like sticking an explosion tag on my face. The older Uchiha titled his head to the side how come? Itachi face palmed, then again he didn't expect Shisui to learn at least the basic safety procedure of Fuinjutsu when he could. Naruto could, just tell him why it's a suicidal idea. Naruto sighed, hmm, first of all Fuinjutsu is a very volatile art when it comes to experimenting the creation. Naruto waved his finger to emphasize his point, when we tried to make a new seal we need a lot of preparations to make sure we have made every possible safety measures we could. 
since Fuinjutsu can be affected by a lot of things if you are not careful. He craned his neck to the side, especially for a disciple like me who just started. He pointed to his face, I need to set up special barrier seal, the same one we have in Chakra sterile room in the tower. It's meant to help isolate the chosen space from ambient chakra and nature so that Fuinjutsu performed in the middle isn't affected by the environment. Unlike other shinobi arts, the process of chakra molding happened outside of our body so it could be affected by nature chakra. Naruto huffed. Oh, so that's why, Shisui said flatly. If Naruto was to judge, he'd say his explanation didn't rate very highly on a scale of usefulness in Shisui's book. The young seal master shook his head, there's no way Shishao will let me to take lessons outside, especially at this time of the year. This time of the year. Shisui repeated. While Itachi's eyes lightened up in cognizance. Ah, I see. Aban is next week right. The curly-haired Uchiha crossed his arms, now you lost me, why Fuinjutsu have anything to do with ghosts visiting our house? E. Naruto sweat dropped at him, aren't you a pretty good censor shinobi, Shisui? Yeah. Itachi and Naruto looked at each other, then Itachi spoke out their query. Don't you feel different when it's around this time of the year? Feels like it's harder to sense people chakra, and how the air feels heavy. Shisui looked thoughtful before he answered. Kind of but I thought it's because the heat. Itachi's left eye twitched, at this time of the year nature chakra is on its peak, Kanaha's nature energy become comparable even to sacred place like Maya Bokuzen. It's a very dangerous time to attempt untested fuinjutsu outside of controlled environment. He explained in solemn tone. But if you're good, and you're attempting nature-based seal, it's the best time of the year for you. Naruto added with a grin. Oh that's why. Shisui hummed as he eyed Naruto skeptically, but still, you have no plan to root in the tower like your fellow seal masters. Naruto nodded at that, you need to move more. I see you manage to keep yourself from becoming stiff with stretching and light exercise, but it won't be enough to keep your body in top shape. Itachi nodded, I have to agree with Shisui on this Naruto-kun, can't you arrange so you can squeeze some time for taijutsu practice at least? Naruto groaned, I wish I could. For one, you need more Sunday. Shisui quipped, do you know that the lack of exposure to sun could cause depression? The blonde scoffed, I don't need sun as much as I need more of me. What? Shisui drawled. Naruto rolled his eyes, I wish I can split myself so I can study seals and training physical stuff in the same time. He said wishfully, and then maybe Aizen's men and Takuza's clan would stop. He had no wish to be disputed over in the tower as bone on contention. He raised an eyebrow at the intense stare Itachi and Shisui gave him. Considering Uchiha had sharp jet black eyes, it was pretty unnerving. Why are you looking at me like that? Itachi and Shisui turned their attention to each other, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Shisui asked with a grin. Itachi nodded, most likely. The Shushin expert grinned then turned to Naruto, Itachi looked at him with stoic face but Naruto could see there's the same strange glint in their jet black eyes. Have you heard of Kage Bunshin, Naruto-kun? He asked, rubbing his hands together with a grin on his face. Eh. Shisui was bristling as he watched five blonde clones toddled above the water surface, three on the three and the other two were reading scrolls. Ten. Ten at once. And he did it as easy as breathing. H.N. Itachi nodded. I can only do two. And that will leave me winded for the rest of the day. He ranted in frustrated tone. Itachi shrugged, H.N. Shisui gave his cousin a side glance, he didn't even use his tenant right? I can't feel demon chakra at all, he is a natural chakra powerhouse even without it. H.N. Natural for an Uzumaki I guess. Shisui added tiredly. I wish I have that much chakra to throw around. You know. The real Uzumaki called them from his perch on the tree, I can't hear your conversation from here, but I can tell Itachi only said H.N. to you in response and yet you converse as if he gave you a complete sentence. He pointed out with dumbfounded face, I thought HN is some sort of stock response you guys give whenever you don't have anything else to say. Shisui snorted, there's a broad meaning in the HN of Uchiha. 
Itachi rolled his eyes, as he walked closer to Naruto while Shisui continued his postponed reading of the fire jutsu scroll on his lap. Basically what you said, I didn't feel like replying Shisui. The Uchiha prodigy said. It's a habit that plagued Uchiha like a curse. Naruto rolled his eyes then whispered, tapping his belly discreetly. Apparently the curse have been for generations since the genesis of Shinobi world. I don't think it's genetic like Uzumaki verbal tick, but more like kids miming their parent kind of thing so. He took a deep breath, if I ever grunt like you do in your vicinity, please whack me on the head as hard as you can. Because my tenant don't want me to pick up any Uchiha's habit at all and you know how racist he was. Itachi nodded, at any rate, about Kagebunshin's memory advantage, if you. I know. Naruto cut him off. It's about my psychological age, isn't it? The Uchiha nodded again, it seemed after they showed him how to do Kagebunshin a day before Naruto had researched the jutsu himself. Naruto had a paranoia of a seasoned umbu, cautious and alert to his surrounding even in his sleep. Itachi acknowledged that as part of physiology wound, the years of negligence had brought upon the young Jinchuriki. Kagebunshin at first seemed to be an innocent solution to Naruto's problem. It was not until Shisui finished showing Naruto the hand seal that the consequences crashed on his mind. Kage Bunshin's memory would be transferred to the user, which making it an excellent espionage tool when used right, and free risk aside from chakra drain. However when a chakra powerhouse like Naruto used it, there's no way Naruto wouldn't abuse the technique. It was not a wrong thing to do though, since it was like saying abusing Sharingan's copy ability is wrong. Naruto however had matured psychologically beyond his age, Kage Bunshin would make the maturing process faster. Naruto still had childish tendency once in a while, but at this rate Naruto would lose that little innocence he had left. Itachi always saw Naruto as a friend, and painfully aware it was not as a younger friend but someone equal. It won't be a bad thing per se, if Naruto was already wearing a headband and older. Naruto was the same age as Sasuke, but after their first meeting that simple fact never crossed Itachi's mind. At one point Itachi forgot this boy was four years younger than him like Sasuke was, and not fellow shinobi his age. And yet. Oi Itachi. He was snapped out of his thought when he felt a fist drilling to his left temple playfully, Naruto was hanging from a branch upside down with his fist on Itachi's temple. What are you doing? Naruto sighed, crossing his arms. Don't overthinking it. He warned him, you always do that. It's no wonder you have stress lines under your eyes already when you haven't even hit puberty yet. Itachi stared at Naruto in disbelief, his younger friend always said the strangest thing out of nowhere and bluntly. What do you know about puberty? Naruto tapped his chin, then looked at Shisui who was practicing his katon technique. What's Shisui is going through for one, and no thanks to my tenant to tell me what is it and that I could find a book about it if I am curious. He shook his head that teach me for being too curious. Itachi just smiled at that, I see. There's no use to cry over spilled milk. Naruto muttered as Itachi looked up at him. In the first place. He closed his eyes, I have little choice when it comes to my life since the day I was born, even entering Ninja Academy is not my choice. Eh. Naruto smiled bitterly, I am an orphan, there's little choices to survive, and my heritage and status are assets Kanaha won't ever let go. The very same reason he was enrolled early like Naruto to academy, brimming potential they couldn't afford to waste while the child had no say in the matter. Ah. I see. Ah. Yeah. Naruto waved his finger warningly, what did I say about stressing your mind over little things? One in the past nonetheless. Naruto huffed, we're prodigies right? That what they said at least. He grumbled under his breath, while we do have the brain power, it's not necessarily the wisdom to put it to good use, we still have a long future ahead. Just take it in stride, shall we? Naruto hopped off of his perch and landed beside Itachi. Beside, you'll be with me to face it, wouldn't you? His lips curved up to a small and barely noticeable smile, one Naruto had seen a couple of times which speak louder than anything. Of course. Naruto thought his halcyon days won't end so soon, that he was never willing to let it go. Chapter 6, Sixth Legacy Interlude, Uzumaki Naruto in their perspective Hinamori Hinamori loved her cow Urhei. 
He was such a beautiful little boy with big, azure eyes and soft, blonde hair. She recognized him right away as the jailer of the Kyubi, and was thankful the poor boy was safe in the tower and away from vengeful villagers. She sometimes wondered if she would have hated the boy like a clueless civilian had she not been a seal master. However, one look at those azure eyes convinced her that she wouldn't have, no demon could have those lonely, doe eyes. She at first thought to treat him like a little brother. After all, Naruto was an orphan, he would love to have an older sister to take care of him. That illusion shattered the moment Yuzuruha and Takuza blatantly showed their submission to the boy and treated him like a prince. He always looked uncomfortable whenever the Shiamitsus were showering him with attention, so Hinamori always had to take the initiative and tell them to leave the poor child alone. The argument that ensued then escalated into a childish scuffle that left them wondering why they were fighting in the first place. At that point, they would begin to argue about who Naruto would rather spend time with. It was usually ended forcefully by Naruto with him pointing out he wouldn't want to spend time either of them if they kept arguing over trivial things. The child of the group acted more mature than they did, and it left Hinamori feeling ashamed enough to call a temporary truce with the Shiamitsus. None of them had the right to spend time with Uzumaki-sama. Takuza. The Uzumaki clan had always been at the top of the seal master hierarchy, but he was not happy when his master told him the new student was an Uzumaki that had to be treated like royalty. When he first met Uzumaki Naruto, Takuza's first impression was that the boy was a walking contradiction. He had expected someone from the Uzumaki line to be loud, brash, and obnoxious but a brilliant seal master. Sure, Uzumaki Naruto was a cheerful child, but he was reserved, polite, and always seemed to be in control of his emotions. His hair was blonde and not the signature red of the Uzumakis, and his eyes were not a steel blue but azure. The only Uzumaki trait in him was his talent for fuinjutsu. Takuza spent most of his time as Naruto's retainer regardless of whether he liked it or not, because it was his master's order. It was bearable since the boy didn't act like a pampered prince. In fact, Naruto rarely asked him for anything, and the first thing he ever did ask of him was unforgettable. Could you help me with this, Takuza? Naruto asked innocently. Initially, he had called Takuza his senpai, but the older boy had insisted Naruto drop the suffix. Ah, Takuza eyed the scroll skeptically. Of course, but... I don't think I'm good enough to help you, Uzumaki-sama. Naruto frowned at him. I don't know what delusions you have about me or my clan, he stated coolly, but I'm not the almighty prodigy who doesn't need any help from my senior. Takuza stammered, I didn't mean to offend. You didn't offend anyone, Takuza. Now, are you going to stand there all day or start helping me? Naruto asked, quirking an eyebrow. Seriously, if you don't like my company, just tell Hakure that a job as my retainer sucks. The older seal master looked at Naruto in disbelief. But that's... Naruto sighed. You know. I'm not used to this making friends thing. He looked thoughtful as he contemplated his next words. Maybe we should talk this over during afternoon tea. He wondered out loud. Making friends. Takuza echoed awkwardly. You want to be my friend, Uzumaki-sama. Naruto nodded. I'm trying, he admitted sheepishly, but it's not working well considering the first friend I made was Itachi, and he is unlike most people. He sighed wearily. And Shisui, is Shisui, he trailed off. So yeah, how does making friends work? He asked sheepishly. Why do you want to be my friend? Takuza couldn't help but ask. Ugh. No particular reason, but maybe it's because I think I have a chance to be your friend, Naruto admitted sheepishly, and Takuza had to wonder why he worded it that way. It sounded like, like. Takuza flinched inwardly as he remembered the young boy's status as a Jinchuriki. Friends must be a luxury to the Uzumaki, and in spite of his newfounded royal status in the tower, Naruto didn't act like a stuck-up prince. Eh. Maybe it would be easier if you weren't working as a retainer or whatever Hakure asked you to be. Takuza blinked. But. Uzumaki-sama. Naruto sighed. You know what, Takuza? Your job sucks, and I don't know why you put up with it. So what I'm an Uzumaki and related to the founder. I'm still a beginner seal master and a cowherhe to you. 
I don't deserve the respect you and your clan give me. He shook his head when Takuza was about to protest. Until I become a great seal master that lives up to my clan's legacy. I don't deserve it. Respect is earned, not given because of my name. Takuza looked into the azure eyes and saw, not deceit, but actual sincerity. His mouth opened, closed, opened again, then promptly closed. The next thing Takuza knew, he was on the floor kneeling in front of the young child. You have earned my respect, Uzumaki-sama. I beg you to keep me as your retainer even though I am unworthy of such a glorious position. Naruto backed away. But. I thought. Of course I will be your friend if you so wish. Naruto felt relieved. I don't mind becoming your dog either. Naruto face palmed at that. Takuza. I think you should stop this train of. I pledge my loyalty to you for the rest of my life, Takuza vowed, looking hopefully at the Jinchuriki. Naruto wondered how one should handle this kind of proposal and decided to take the simplest method. Eh, thank you. The Uzumaki tried, and judging from how Takuza was beaming with joy, it was the correct answer, hopefully. Yuzuruha. If anyone asked how Uzumaki Naruto had won her loyalty, they would laugh because it was not from girly adoration like Hinamori or the acceptance he showed Takuza. He gained her loyalty through one, simple sentence uttered during her taijutsu practice. She hadn't expected him to walk past the training ground with his Uchiha friends and say, you will be a good frontline seal master, Yuzuruha. He had eyed the seal arrays on her long SC Earth enthusiastically. That's an amazing wind element seal. It was a simple compliment, but one she had never received from anyone. Due to smaller chakra reserves, females tended to have less accessible chakra and weaker stamina. They were not usually suited to be on the front lines as a seal master. Yuzuruha had worked hard to perfect her physical skills and few in jutsu, but not even her master believed she could succeed. And yet he believed in her, had even given her a casual compliment as he walked by. Yuzuruha had spent days coming to terms with her newly found feelings. After all, it wasn't every day you realized you had a crush on a seven-year-old boy. Sixth Legacy, Shattered Dream There are many things I'd be willing to give for this village, but you and Itachi aren't it. Uzumaki Naruto. Azure eyes peeked through the lens of a camera. A grin was etched onto his handsome face as he waved to the beautiful redhead who sat on the sofa. Kushina. Smile, my dear. If I smile any wider I'll look stupid, Databane. Kushina huffed, pouting at her husband. Now come over here. Hurry up, Minato. Minato grinned as he came from behind the camera and approached his wife. He knelt in front of her and placed his ear on her bulging stomach. Oh, our boy is kicking again, he muttered fondly. Kushina just smiled at him. Are you sure you want to pose like this for the camera? If your enemies see you they will cancel that flea on sight order, she giggled. The camera flashed and the picture was taken. Minato looked up, grinning from ear to ear. I don't care, right now, I just want to be your idiot husband and father of our son. Not the cool and smooth yellow flash of Kanaha. Kushina laughed softly at that. Oh, Minato. I'm afraid you are going to spoil our son Rodden. I will. Minato promised, laughing softly when he felt another kick. I can't wait to meet you, too, my dear son. You hear that, my little prince? Kushina cooed as she rubbed her bulging stomach. We will shower you with love the moment you are born. She laughed softly. I just hope we don't suffocate you with it. That dream of a perfect, little family never came true. Naruto, you're going to experience a lot of pain and suffering. Remember who you are. Find a goal, a dream, and don't stop trying until it comes true. There's, there's so much more that I want to say, to teach you. I want to stay with you. I love you. Naruto, this is your dad. Listen, to your motor mouth mother. I second everything she's said. We wish we could be there for you to watch you grow up, but, don't forget we'll always love you. Naruto opened his azure eyes, gasping for breath as he sat up. Ha. Huh. It hurt so much, this suffocating grief was gnawing at him. He had accepted that he was an orphan a long time ago. However, knowing his parents had loved him so much made his heart hurt whenever he was slammed back into reality. 
the memory is torturing you. Coming from Karama, it was a statement. You should stop letting it invade your dreams. Naruto shook his head. No, no, Karama. I want it. But. The fox protested. Please, let me have this memory. I want to feel loved. Let me have this selfish, childish longing, please. Naruto begged as he hugged himself. I promise I will not trouble you, just let it be. Heh, you're still a child. Despite his words, Kurama wasn't heartless enough to meddle with the memory and deprive Naruto of the only connection to his parents. The boy treasured every memory he had, so he deserved at least that much. He just hoped his vessel would stay strong. As a biju he could protect his vessel's mind to an extent, but he couldn't perform miracles. This was entirely their fault, Kurama decided. The demon fox had to wonder at the wisdom of hiding so many things from the child. The only reason Kurama didn't reveal anything to Naruto about his parents was because he felt that the old Kage should take responsibility for all the secrets. It was bad enough Naruto found out about his Jinchuriki status on his own, so Kurama would be damned if the Hokage didn't regret his foolishness at all. Then again, Kurama could tell Naruto had realized who his parents were, at least the identity of his father anyway. After all, the dream had become more vivid with each passing day. Just know it wasn't his fault if it blew up in their faces later. Congratulations, Naruto-kun. The Sandaima said as he handed Naruto a headband of Kanaha. Naruto looked down at the headband, tracing the Kanaha symbol inscribed on the metal surface with his fingers, and then turned to the smiling, old Kage. Oh. Should he be happy? Thank you, Hokage-sama. He bowed in respect then turned to his Shishao and did the same. Sandaime frowned. You don't seem happy with your promotion, Naruto-kun, he pointed out. The Jinchuriki stiffened. It's just, about the Genin teams. Naruto looked up with determined eyes. If possible, I don't want to be on a team for the time being. I see. He didn't question him. Sandaime could see the reason as plain as day why Naruto didn't want to be a part of a Genin team. He was the youngest Genin they had in their ranks now and if he was put on a team it would be with older genin. Naruto hadn't had the best experience when dealing with those older genin, especially since his academy days of being bullied were still fresh in his mind. Being classmates was one thing, being teammates was quite another. A team was supposed to be composed of shinobi you trusted, but Naruto couldn't trust so easily. Sandaime nodded. You can continue working in the tower, Naruto could. His eyes lit up at the prospect. I can. Of course. You're already a specialist and your skills as a seal master is highly valued. Besides, Aizen would be sad to see his precious disciple leave any time soon, the Hokage assured. Naruto beamed. Thank you, Hokage-sama. It was no secret Naruto had somehow managed to graduate from the academy. So when the villagers had shunned and glared at Naruto even more harshly, they had expected some type of reaction, not indifference. He didn't even show his ire through his pranks like he had in the past. It's true that his pranks were annoying, but his indifferent behavior was downright irritating. Itachi and Shisui had heard a civilian ranting about how the demon child had raised an eyebrow at him when the he glared heatedly at the Jinchuriki. Apparently, civilians who tried to voice their hatred with a glare or a muttered insult felt like they were being treated like an idiot by the Jinchuriki. Especially after that one incident where a genin had deliberately blocked Naruto's path. The genin had glared at Naruto and told the Jinchuriki to watch where he was going. Naruto, at that time, had just spent the whole night writing a report and had been really tired. All he'd been craving for was his bed, but he'd had to deliver the report to the Hokage personally. And so Naruto had flippantly retorted that, only idiots stand in the middle of the sidewalk and get pissed when people walked into them. Idiots all of you. And then the Jinchuriki had stormed off, leaving behind a dumbfounded genin and villagers. The Hokage had had a mild panic attack that day when he received a report from Umbu saying that Naruto might have lost his patience and snapped. Naruto had quickly assured the Hokage that he was just tired and badly needed some sleep. When reprimanded for calling the villagers idiots, Naruto hadn't apologized at all and said, they shouldn't be offended if it's not true. The Hokage had just sighed. 
He would have said more about how insults were not the right way to deal with civilians, but Naruto had promptly passed out on the floor of his office. That ended their conversation splendidly. The Hokage had then ordered Tori and his squad to take Naruto back to the tower. It was then he realized that Naruto, for some reason, was using sarcasm to express his ire. Naruto, who woke up the next day, apologized to the Sandaime and said he wished he could say the same to the offended party. Sandaime could tell it wasn't exactly a sincere apology but one that was expressed to keep up appearances. The old Kage didn't even realize in his relief about Naruto not snapping that the boy was growing indifferent to their opinions. Autumn was the season of harvest where leaves in Kanaha's forest changed to mirror the colors of sunset. According to the civilians, it was a season of literature, gourmet, and sports. To the shinobi population, it was just another season that forced them to adapt their camouflage techniques. Shisui, though, couldn't have cared less about half of that. He felt it was just a season of good food where he had to watch his diet to avoid overeating. He did have to keep his ideal body after all, though it wasn't for cosmetic purposes of course. So his mind failed at understanding why Tachi's little prodigy friend thought it was a good season to simply watch the leaves fall. It was not like the blonde neglected his training, but at some point in the start of autumn, the boy always allowed himself or a clone to stare at the falling leaves. He used to get how the gears in Naruto's mind worked. But now it seemed the boy had transformed into some kind of genius, which was probably why he didn't understand the brat anymore. It was either that or the blonde Jinchuriki had gone absolutely bonkers. Naruto. This time it was the real one who watched the leaves. Are you okay? Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. Of course I am. Why do you ask? You're watching leaves fall like Inara watching clouds, Shisui pointed out. I'm trying to figure out something, silly. Naruto scoffed as he watched a yellow leaf fall in front of his face. You know. All these leaves fall to the ground in different fashions, flipping as if dancing in the air. Shisui blinked oolishly at the blonde. Since when you did you start speaking poetically? On second thought, you and Itachi seem to like being cryptic. Don't speak as though I'm not here, Itachi said to his cousin from his seat on the branch above Naruto's. We're ninja, Naruto replied flippantly before turning his attention back on the leaves. Ah, it's already been half a year. Time flies so fast. It's already October. Shisui grinned. Speaking of October, your birthday's soon. Naruto flinched at that. Is there anything you want? We can celebrate with cake. Shisui. Itachi hissed. I don't feel like celebrating when a majority of Kanaha is visiting grave sites. Shisui blanched at the dead Pantone Naruto used. Besides, the only thing I know about my parents is that their death anniversary is October 10th. Neither Uchiha could hide their flinch at the reminder. If anything I would visit their graves, but I don't know where they are unfortunately. Sarcasm was dripping from his voice, but both knew it was not aimed at them but at all of those who kept the information from him. Shisui didn't know anything about Naruto's parents, and while Itachi did know a bit, he had no right to give out that information. Itachi sometimes wished the Hokage hadn't resorted to such extreme measures to keep Naruto's heritage a secret. Everything had been going so well lately that they'd forgot October was anything but a pleasant month for Naruto. In fact, since October 1st, Naruto had refused to step out into the city or any other crowded area in Kanaha, especially with the villagers growing ire. Naruto cackled at the worry evident on their faces. I'm not going to refuse a bowl of Ichiraku ramen, and presents would be nice, he assured them. No cake and candle blowing though. Itachi's eyes softened at his young friend. That's fine. Besides, if I refused presents, everyone in the tower would be disappointed, he said with a sigh. They've tried to be discreet, but, the Shiamitsus in particular have been not so subtlety implying I'd be wonderful with a sword if I took up Kenjutsu. Shisui rubbed the back of his head. If it's just basic kenjutsu I think we can teach you. We're no masters, but we're proficient. I haven't said anything about adding kenjutsu to my arsenal, Naruto pointed out. I'm in the process of creating a fighting style that suits me, and I want to base it on what I already have. Itachi smiled at that as he swung down from the tree and landed on his feet. You don't have to create an entirely new fighting style, 
you can base it off an existing one and work on how to make it yours. The fighting style I know best is the Uchiha style, because you two are my main training partners. Most of the time he lost, which was why he wanted to develop a style of his own. Though, Yuzuruha and Takuza spar with me sometimes. Yuzuruha was Takuza's older sister and basically looked like an older, female version of Takuza with a ponytail. Their fighting style involves a lot of kicks and wide attacks. Which is not for a midget with short limbs like you. Shisui grinned from ear to ear. Naruto glared at the curly-haired Uchiha, crossing his arms as he stood up from his seat. How mature. A 14-year-old shinobi is teasing an 8-year-old about his height. Itachi sighed, not even bothering to point out that Naruto, at some point, had grown taller and was already taller than Sasuke by a few inches if his estimations were correct. It was not surprising considering Naruto's diet. It was the healthiest menu Itachi had ever seen, especially since Naruto cooked his food himself. He had even seen Naruto drink a carton of milk in one go like it was water. It seemed Shisui's teasing about his height really bothered Naruto. Speaking of growing, there was one thing that really bothered him. The Uchiha prodigy stared at the spiky, golden mess Naruto called hair. Naruto-kun, I think your hair is getting a bit too long. Naruto raised an eyebrow at him. I cut it yesterday with a kunai, of course with no mirror, and Yuzuruha also helped. It's slightly longer than my old hair. It doesn't get in the way. I can see just fine, and Yuzuruha said it looked good on me, Naruto chalked up his list of reasons. And besides, who cares about hair? I don't. Actually, a majority of the population cared, because the length of his hair was disturbingly identical to the Yondai Mez, especially with how the front locks framed his face. If you say so. Itachi mentally noted to tell the Shiamitsu that giving Naruto an identical haircut to his father was a bad idea. Though it was probably pointless since Naruto had no intentions of enduring the haircutting process again. Naruto looked up to a medium-sized bird flying in a circle above them, it was probably a dove in training sending a letter. One of its feathers fell from the sky, falling down gently because of its lightness. Naruto's right hand shot out and the feather landed on his palm. He could barely feel the brush of the feather it was so soft and light. When it fell from his hand, it fell slowly. Naruto turned to Shisui, who raised an eyebrow at his grin, and waited until the wind picked up, blowing in Shisui's direction. Shisui! Catch! Naruto shouted as he threw an object at the Shunshin expert. Shisui's eyes widened as he jumped and attempted to catch the small rock Naruto threw at him, but it slipped past his hands. What was that for? Shisui asked indignantly. The genjutsu specialist clamped his mouth shut the moment he saw the glint in Naruto's eyes. It was the dreaded Eureka glint, which involved troublesome experimenting he loathed to be a part of. The first time he'd been involved was awesome, but the second and the third time. Shisui Naruto sang cheerfully. No, no 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 no. Whatever it is I'm not doing it. Forget it. Never. Ever. No. That's final. Three days later. Naruto was bouncing up and down on a trampoline, feathers he'd scattered all over the trampoline were floating in the air. Itachi and Shisui watched from the sidelines as their young friend bounced for who knows what reason. So, can you explain what our little prodigy is thinking this time? Shisui asked curiously. He's been doing this for hours. Honestly, it didn't look healthy especially since the trampoline catapulted the boy at least 12 feet into the air. That wasn't a healthy height to be in continuously, even for a ninja. Itachi shook his head. No, he answered curtly. All I know is that he's trying to figure something out. Shisui huffed, muttering, yesterday he asked us to practice kanjutsu with a mechanical fan and the hundreds of feathers he got from ripping pillows. Itachi nodded. It's an interesting exercise. Cutting weightless, floating feathers with a sword was much harder than cutting falling leaves. Though Itachi really did wonder if the boy was alright. Ugh. Naruto guffawed. Shisui face palmed. Ah shit. I bet Naruto is having the headache of the century. Itachi quickly caught the younger boy from midair and dragged him under the shade of a lush tree. Naruto looked awful as he rubbed his throbbing cranium. Itachi offered him a drink which was accepted gratefully. 
I feel awful, Naruto admitted wearily. Shisui groaned. Of course you feel sick. What the hell were you thinking? Itachi sighed, Shisui, lower your voice. You're not helping his headache. Naruto nodded in agreement weakly. Yeah, anyways, I almost got it, he grinned. It'll be awesome irk. Excuse me. Naruto ran to the bush with a hand covering his mouth. He then promptly emptied the contents of his stomach. Itachi watched Naruto wobble as he tried to stand up straight. Last month, Naruto had doubled his training regime and it was bordering unhealthy. There was obviously something besides creating a new fighting style on Naruto's mind, but Itachi wasn't sure it was wise to pry. Itachi. Shisui called. HN. Shisui looked down. Why hasn't he put on his Kanaha headband since receiving it from Hokage-sama? He asked sadly. Itachi shook his head. I don't know, but I don't think he wants us to ask. He knew the headband was always in Naruto's pocket, but the blonde boy never deigned to wear it. And he didn't make a fuss over his genin status either, Shisui pointed out. He became a genin before his eighth birthday just like you, Itachi. Genin at seven. Even a prodigy like him would be happy for that. Heck. Even you were happy. The Shunshin expert groaned. We didn't even know he was promoted until we saw the blue cloth of his headband sticking out from his pocket. Itachi sighed. It's probably nothing. Or at least he hoped it was nothing. Takuza and Yuzuruha had been told by the Uchiha cousins about their young master's wishes for his birthday. Although they had to agree it would be unwise to celebrate on a parent's death anniversary, Naruto's parents wouldn't have minded if their son celebrated his birthday. It's just that Naruto was really uncomfortable about it. Uh. Naruto-sama, Yuzuruha started, eyeing the young seal master having a tea break with them. About your birthday. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the SC air wearing Kunoichi who was sitting Siza beside her brother in front of his chair. He would never be comfortable with their tradition of sitting at a lower level than himself. You don't have to be so weary of broaching that subject with me, he assured her as he set down his cup. And like what I told Itachi and Shisui, you can give me presents, we can eat good food and so on. I just don't want to have cake or candle blowing. Takuza shook his head. But we were thinking about celebrating your birthday on October 11th instead. The blonde seal master blinked oolishly. A day late? Why? Yuzuruha fidgeted with her SC Erf, well, we thought it would be a good idea. And, it's like celebrating, um, the first day of your life. Eh, that didn't sound right. What she meant to say was, late birthday presents aren't bad. Takuza rambled. Neither is cake. If you think a candle is childish, Naruto-sama, we can just have cake. Yuzuruha assured him as they continued to ramble on. Naruto raised his hands to calm them down. Takuza, Yuzuruha, you're rambling, calm down. They flushed a deep red, and Naruto chuckled at their reaction. I'm sorry for being uncooperative about my birthday. I don't think it's a bad idea to celebrate it late. I don't mind the cake or candles either. Yuzuruha and Takuza went wide-eyed. Really? Their excitement was so innocent it made Naruto wonder who was older here, him or them. And this reaction was all from birthday celebrations. Yes, of course. He said in an amused tone as he picked up a napkin. He reached out to clean Takuza's hair and use Yuruha's left cheek, they both had gotten orange and white cream in their hair the moment they'd started rambling. They froze when they saw the napkin had frosting on it. I will leave the cake to you, he assured them. Hopefully, the kitchen would stay intact until his birthday. They stammered, blushing a deep red. Hi. Naruto-sama. October 10th. Clink clink clink. Clink clink clink. Clink clink clink. Shut up. Karama roared in the sewer mindscape. Naruto woke up. That dream again, full of rattling chains. Naruto mumbled sleepily. And Karama is cranky. What a wonderful start to the day. He began his morning with a shower, some morning stretches, and inspecting what he had in his fridge. He would have to ask Takuza or Yuzuruha to shop for him soon, he only had bread, three apples, a carton of milk, 
three eggs, a banana and a bowl of leftover salad from last night. His stamina was monstrous, so his body demanded a big consumption of food. He wished he could shop for himself, but he didn't want to deal with irritated vendors in October. It would sour his mood. It looked like the menu for breakfast today would be omelettes with cherry tomatoes inside, French toast, salad and stir-fried apples. Naruto ate his breakfast silently, wondering about the previous day's events. He shouldn't have asked such a thing from Itachi. He troubled the guy enough by simply being his friend. When Naruto finished his breakfast, he had planned to wash the dishes, but there was a knock on his door. Naruto dropped his eating utensils in the sink. He climbed up the door with Chakra and looked through the peephole to see his visitor. He frowned when he saw Aizen smiling, waiting patiently for a response. Naruto opened the door, tightling his head to the side. Ah, Shishao, I didn't expect a visit so early in the morning, he muttered. From the corner of his eyes he noticed Aizen's katana. That was not a good sign. Aizen just smiled. I wanted to congratulate my favorite disciple on his 8th birthday, he said as he ruffled Naruto's golden locks fondly. Naruto chuckled softly at that. I am your only disciple, Shishao. Which gives even more reason for you to be my favorite, Aizen added with a smile. I have a surprise for my disciple today. He leaned in conspiratorially. It's a secret I'll only share with you. Oh. Naruto put on his childish mask of excitement. Really, Shishao? Inwardly, Naruto flinched at how giddy he sounded. Ow, this doesn't sound good. It sounds so promising, Kurama growled irately. If you're going to follow this guy, go prepared at least. Will do. Naruto nodded when Aizen asked him to come along. Um, can you wait for a few minutes, Shishao? I have a spar planned with Itachi later so I need to pack up now. Aizen frowned at that. I guess you can, we're not going to take long though. Thank you. Naruto rushed back into his room and gathered his storage scrolls, a weapon pouch, and a couple of seals he could use to defend himself. He returned to the hallway where Aizen was waiting for him and was very surprised to find Hinamori there with him. Hinamori was Aizen's right-hand woman, a very young-looking female with jet black hair pulled up in a bun and equally dark eyes. Unlike Aizen who he could tell had underhanded objectives, Hinamori was very sincere and adored Naruto like an older sister. Happy birthday, Naruto-kun, Hinamori said as she fervently kissed his cheeks and put a dark orange S scarf around his neck gently. Here is your present. It's been getting cold lately so I made this for you. Thank you, Hinamori Nisan, Naruto said to the older girl timidly while seething inwardly. Whatever Aizen was planning, he had a hostage ready. Damn it. It's very warm. He grinned cheerfully, while his left hand reached into his left pocket. He channeled a bit of chakra into the first seal he grabbed. Let's go, Naruto-kun, Aizen called out. He nodded. Let's. As they walked, he let the seal fall from his hand discreetly. No one noticed as it was burned by a bluish chakra. Itachi woke up with an unexplainable sense of foreboding. He was folding his blanket when Sasuke knocked on his door, and Itachi told him to come in. His brother greeted him with a good morning and latched onto his arm, smiling innocently at him. He ruffled Sasuke's black locks fondly and told him to go ahead for breakfast. His little brother was about to walk away, but stopped when a weasel-looking Haniwa statue above his wardrobe shattered into pieces. Nissan. Sasuke called him worriedly. Itachi recalled that the statue was some sort of joke Naruto had given to him and Shisui. He wasn't certain about the origins of it, but he suspected that one of the Shiamitsus gave it to the boy. Inside the Haniwa, Naruto had engraved a seal called Kadama, Echo, which was a simple seal that would emit chakra when an identical seal was activated. Naruto joked it was some sort of SOS signal, though it wasn't really usable since they didn't know how to activate the seal. Itachi mostly just kept it as a memento of their friendship. The older Uchiha smiled at Sasuke. I'm sorry, Sasuke, but tell Kasan I need to go now, Itachi said as he quickly put his backpack on. His supplies were always ready in case of an emergency. But, Nisan. Sasuke protested. Before Itachi jumped from his windowsill, he said, I'll be back soon. 
The Uchiha Sion hopped from roof to roof through the Uchiha complex, and didn't even bat an eye when Shisui joined him. Oheo, oh, Itachi. Oheo, oh, Itachi returned. So you receive the same signal. Shisui growled under his breath, it's a good thing he never published that echo seal. It could only mean he's in a pretty desperate situation. Twenty minutes later they reached the tower and found the Shiamitsus were in a panic. They couldn't find their prodigy anywhere. Itachi approached one of the Shiamitsus, Shian if he recalled correctly, who had long, pale sandy blonde hair that seemed to be the dominant hair color of his clan, and was dressed in a dark blue kimono. Shian San. He would have called the man by his surname, but he was not the only Shiamitsu in the vicinity. What happened? Shian looked aghast as he contemplated how to tell Itachi. Uzumaki-sama is missing, we usually wouldn't be worried since he's always somewhere in the tower, but, this morning when Takuza went to his room, we found a number of anomalies. Such as. Itachi pressed. Shian took a deep breath. His weapons pouch and storage scrolls were gone. Which meant wherever Naruto went, he was expecting a battle. His dishes were left unwashed in the sink. He was also in a hurry. And we found a burned out seal in front of his door. Which couldn't be a good sign at all. Aizendano and Hinamari-san are missing too. Shisui gritted his teeth. Aizen. She impaled. He couldn't be. The seal mastered pondered for a moment. It's his, 8th birthday. Oh. Could it be? The Shuzen expert glared at the seal master, while Itachi stayed silent. Explain. Why does his disappearance have anything to do with his birthday? It's, the coming of age for Uzumaki clan. Shian muttered hesitantly, there are some seals that could only used by by Uzumaki clan after that transition. He probably wants to use Uzumaki sama for that. Shisui's sherry non flashed, I know that bastard is up to no good. Itachi had told him to be wary of Aizen, and Shisui trusted Itachi's judgment. Itachi narrowed his eyes, he could predict the timeline if Naruto had finished his breakfast but he had no time to wash the dishes. Considering his daily schedule that meant Naruto went out around 7, which was a few minutes before Naruto sent his distress signal. Which meant he had been missing for almost one hour. We should contact Sandai Mesama. We need reinforcement, something suspicious is happening here. That won't be necessary, a familiar cool voice echoed. We have sent a messenger to Hokage-sama. Itachi turned around and was relieved to see the familiar mask of his captain. Torai Taijo. Torai craned his neck to the side. I thought we could celebrate Naruto-kun's birthday today, but here I've heard he was kidnapped. Seriously. I can't leave that boy alone for a minute. The Umbu captain slowly lost his friendly demeanor as killing intent leaked from his body. If that bastard dares to harm Naruto, he'll pay. The seal tower was actually not as tall as Hokage Tower, in fact it was just a three-story cylinder-shaped building from outside. Why it was called a tower was simply because it underground level was 20-story. One could say it towered towards center of earth rather than the sky. They went through a secret passage on the lowest level of the tower, one that ironically resembled the sewer of his mindscape. They arrived on a giant tree stump which was located at the end of the sewer. Naruto eyed the giant seal array carved into the wooden surface likely made by the Shodaima. He had never seen this kind of seal before, but the leftover chakra on it was calling out to him. It was a seal of the Uzumaki clan, a legacy of Uzumaki Mito. It seemed whatever Aizen wanted needed an Uzumaki. This is the legacy of your clan, Naruto-kun, Aizen informed, his genial smile firmly in place. Isn't it amazing? Naruto forced a grin. I can't comprehend this seal at all, but it does looks amazing, he admitted wearily. Aizen narrowed his eyes and for the first time, Naruto knew he saw a glimpse of the real Aizen in that moment. You can sense it, can't you, heir of the Uzumaki clan? Naruto couldn't help but back away when Aizen released killing intent. His eyes widened when he saw the man move. Hinamori. Get away from him. He shouted in panic. Hinamori looked nervously at her superior. He had been acting very strange since he'd led them down here. Aizen-sama, what? She was knocked unconscious before she even knew Aizen had moved. Naruto gritted his teeth as he eyed his soon-to-be former mentor. 
Hinamori was unconscious because of some sort of hypnotic jutsu of Aizen's, but the blonde boy didn't drop his guard. He watched as the man dropped the female seal master unceremoniously onto the ground. Shishao, Naruto tried to fake his confusion, what did you do? Aizen laughed as he took off his glasses and pushed his hair back, giving him a sinister look that was the very opposite of his genial mask. Naruto-kun, let us drop our masks, shall we? He asked in a sardonic tone. Both of us are undoubtedly sick of them. The Jinchuriki scowled at his former mentor. R, what's the meaning of this? What do you want? Very forward of you, Naruto-kun. As for the reason why, you're eight years old today. Your Uzumaki chakra should have started maturation by now. Aizen explained with a malevolent smile. I have to say I like this you better than the obedient and quiet prodigy persona you show on a daily basis. Naruto scoffed. His chakra? Uzumaki chakra? It's not really a mask, this is the disgusted face I show to scum like you Aizen. Ha glanced at the unmoving form of Hyanmarai, you used her to drag me to this place. Aizen shrugged. Can you blame me? No matter how hard I tried to get you to trust me, you always put your guard up. I even got into that stupid rivalry with the Shiomitsus. He sighed wearily. Neither the Shiomitsus nor the Uchihas helped either, they were wary of me just like you. For a good reason, bastard, Naruto snarled. Enough of this. What do you want? He asked impatiently. He needed to get Hinamori away from this man, because so long as she was here, he couldn't escape or fight back. Impatient, are we? Well. I do have something in mind that, an Uzumaki like you could help me with, Aizen said in a velvety voice that sickened Naruto to the core. I want you to activate this seal with your chakra. The Jinchuriki glared at the giant seal array. What's it for? You can't expect me to cooperate without knowing. Aizen shrugged nonchalantly. Fair enough, this is a containment seal. Naruto's eyes widened in shock, unconsciously glancing at his stomach. What's inside? A treasure. Aizen answered. Don't worry. It's not a demon. The blonde Jinchuriki stiffened at that. This seal was made by Mito-sama, and even with my meager knowledge I can tell it's a very powerful seal. Whatever it contains should forever belong there. He shouted angrily. He had to stall for more time. Itachi and Shisui would have noticed something was wrong and followed the trail he left by now. Aizen snorted. Do you forget who has the advantage here? He muttered as he unsheathed his katana. He grazed Hinamari's left cheek causing a trail of blood to slide down her face. Naruto flinched, gritting his teeth in anger. Fine. What should I do to activate this seal? Glad you see things my way, Naruto-kun, Aizen told him with a smile. Stand in the middle of the seal and channel your chakra. Naruto glared at his former mentor as he stepped onto the seal array not taking his eyes off the man until he reached the center. Just promise me you won't harm her. Aizen sighed theatrically, I promise. Naruto scowled, couldn't this man sound even more fake than that? He reluctantly channeled his chakra to the seal, it glowed briefly but nothing happened. He gritted his teeth, it's not working. He muttered in disbelief. The slick-haired man growled at the boy. Don't play with me, boy, or something tragic will happen to her. He shouted as he placed his katana next to Hinamari's slender neck. Naruto shook his head. I'm not playing around. He shouted desperately. I'm not a pure-blooded Izumaki, so maybe that's why. It's not my fault. Don't hurt her. Aizen scowled at the blonde boy, that's probably the case if your mother married someone else, but she married someone who was also an offshoot from Senjo, your blood. Izumaki blood, Senjo blood is in no way diluted. He stated confidently. Aizen scowled at the blonde boy. That would have probably been the case had your mother married someone else, but she married an offspring of the Senja family, your blood. Uzumaki blood and Senja blood, is in no way diluted, he stated confidently. But it didn't work. Naruto denied fervently. What do you know about genetics anyway? If it didn't work that means it can't function with my chakra. There's no reason for you to keep us here. Maybe you just need the proper motivation. Aizen hoisted Hinamori up by her collar and ran his katana down her left arm. 
Hinamori screamed in pain as a deep gash appeared on her left arm, Aiyayak. But she didn't wake up from her deep sleep. Stop it! Naruto cried desperately. Aizen smirked but it quickly disappeared the moment he felt cold steel on both sides of his glance to his sides, a pair of garnet orbs with Tomo stared back at him. Since when they were here? How did you find us? He wondered out loud, Itachi-kun, Shisui-kun. Itachi narrowed his sherry non eyes. You underestimate Naruto-kun, he muttered as he pressed his ninjato against Aizen's neck, drawing a thin line of blood. He didn't follow you without alerting us and leaving a trail to follow. Shisui grinned as he raised his free hand. Strands of golden locks glinted dimly in the room. I don't know how he did it, but apparently his hair has special properties when imbued with chakra. The chakra stays for a long period of time and acts as a beacon for a sensor like me to follow. Naruto blinked at the information. When Kurama had suggested that method he hadn't thought it was actually going to work but it did. How the hell did he not know his own hair could do that? Oh. Your mother did the same so your father would find her. Karama, you make it sound like they were flirting even though the situation was probably serious. I'm me, Karama deadpanned. Okay. Naruto sighed in relief. The crisis was diverted for now, or at least it was not as bad as before. Now if he could get Hinamori away from that man. Aizen sighed theatrically giving the shinobi a bad feeling. Too bad you didn't catch me off guard, he said as he escaped from their grasp with a shunshin, Hinamori still in his grasp. Shit. Shisui cursed. The man was faster than he'd thought. They had underestimated Aizen by thinking the man was only Midchenin level. It seemed everything about the man was fake. Aizen reappeared on the giant tree trunk, right on the edge of the giant seal array. He knelt down and tapped the side of it, and another seal array appeared, encircling the side of the trunk like a belt. Itachi's eyes widened when he saw the rune in the center of the seal Aizen had activated. Everyone. Get away from the water. Too late, Aizen muttered. A torrent of lightning-natured chakra streaked across the water's surface. Even with the warning none of them managed to get away in time, even the Umbu squad waiting to ambush Aizen fell one by one. Arg. Naruto's eyes widened in fear. Itachi. Shisui. Torai. Everyone. Fortunately for them, the seal was very old and had not been properly maintained, thus it didn't kill them. Naruto couldn't believe his eyes. They were severely weakened, but they had all managed to survive. Itachi, Shisui and Tori had even managed to stand up on the water surface. But at least Aizen couldn't attack them in that scale anymore, unless he... You, have. Naruto's eyes widened when he noticed Aizen's katana had an electric current running through it. Lightning affinity. Aizen finished in an amused tone. Yes, all I have to do is dip my katana in this water and they're all dead. Naruto rose to his feet angrily, his right hand grasping three shuriken engraved with seals. Don't you dare, Aizen. If you do I will kill you. He hissed angrily. I know you have hostages because you can't kill me. You need me alive, so you're not the only one with an advantage here. How perceptive, Aizen said sardonically as he sheathed his katana. However, he shunshined and reappeared behind Itachi and Shisui. Itachi swung his ninjato, but his reflexes were slowed from the last attack. Shisui reacted the same but, before their weapons could strike Aizen, the seal master sent them sprawling into the tree trunk. Naruto threw his shuriken and watched his blade of wind form and soar through the air. Aizen dodged the incoming projectile with another shunshin and reappeared at his original position on the tree trunk. Naruto was forced to stop his attack, Hinamori, Itachi, and Shisui were too close to Aizen. You. He gritted his teeth. Since the very beginning Aizen had been expecting the ambush, and he had an advantage of knowing the terrain better than they did. They had advantage in number but that was nullified the moment they were caught off guard by that lightning element seal. Aizen smiled as he hoisted a sopping wet Uchiha cousins onto the wooden surface. Naruto didn't have to be a genius to know what Aizen could do to them with a simple touch. Now. I know that Hinamori is not that important to you. Naruto was going to deny Aizen's accusation, but his blood ran cold when Aizen stabbed his katana right through Itachi's left arm. The Uchihas grunted in pain but didn't cry out. 
They were paralyzed from head to toe, but I know Itachi-kun is very precious to you. Shisui-kun, too, he said as he stabbed Shisui's waist with a kunai. Itachi. Shisui. Naruto didn't miss the lightning element seal on both weapons, and he had no delusions they would survive if those weapons acted as a lightning rod for Aizen. Aizen. Torai roared. Let them go. Itachi could feel himself slipping into unconsciousness. N.A. Ruto. If he passed out here, the battle was as good as lost. Now I have three hostages, Aizen announced as he made a ram seal. Do you really think there's still a chance for you, Naruto-kun? Unseal the treasure. Naruto fell on his knees, gritting his teeth as he realized his only option. Fine. He shouted, his eyes closed as tears streamed down his face. Just don't hurt them anymore, please. Naruto-kun. Itachi shouted, gritting his teeth. Don't listen to him. Yeah. Shisui growled. Just kill this bastard. Don't mind us. Aizen scowled. These Uchiha brats were really annoying. You're very lucky I need you alive, Uchiha. He muttered sinisterly. But isn't your request cruel? He wondered out loud. Asking this poor Jinchuriki, who has been shunned his entire life, to abandon his friends. Shisui's eyes widened as he turned his attention to Naruto. The Jinchuriki was gritting his teeth, his fists clenched to the point blood was dripping onto the ground. Naruto, you. He has sacrificed so much for this village, Aizen stated with a sneer, but what has he gotten in return? Scorn, hatred, isolation, and you ask him to sacrifice both of you for this village? Haven't you asked him enough? Shisui shook his head. Naruto, don't listen to him. You don't want this. You can't do as he said just to. Naruto bit his bottom lip, drawing a trail of blood down his chin. Shut up. He hissed, there are many things I'd be willing to give for this village, but you and Itachi aren't it. Itachi gritted his teeth. How could they ask for more from this boy? He had already lost so much, and they asked him to lose more? Itachi glared at Aizen. If only he could get rid of this stupid lightning seal and recover from this paralysis. Karama, help me, I can't let this bastard get away with this, Naruto said mentally to his tenant. This guy is really sneaky and I need him to get away from my friends, but the only way to do that is, to activate the seal and attack him when he is distracted by his precious treasure. And for that, you're asking me how to call out Nuzumaki's special chakra? Karama asked in disbelief. How should I know? But if it helps any, your mother's materialized as chains, and Mito's was a long dragon and sword. So, it's a type of chakra that materializes into some sort of weapon or animal. It's different for each person, but I suspect yours is the same as Kushina's, so try to visualize a chain or something. That's a pretty vague suggestion. Naruto murmured. I will try to call out my chakra again. His eyes narrowed at Aizen, as long as you keep your hands off of them. Aizen nodded. As long as you behave. He added with a sneer. Naruto gritted his teeth with eyes closed in absolute concentration as he formed a ram seal. He recalled the dreams he'd had on many occasions of thousands of rattling chains. He began hearing them, unsure and uncaring if he was just hallucinating out of desperation. He could feel a chakra pool into his navel but, unlike his usual blue chakra or Karama's red, it was yellow, or was it a pale orange? Gold? It didn't matter. He thought as he mentally reached out his hand to grab the phantom chains of his mind. His blue eyes glimmered as he opened them to stare at Aizen and his friends. He had to protect them, no matter what the consequences. The key word is, a familiar feminine voice echoed in his mid. C.E. Yakuno Kyuzeri. Chain of pledge, protect my comrades, and chain down my foe. A chain of chakra erupted from his back and moved to the array of seals. Naruto gagged as he felt the chains trace the seal like a living being. The seal absorbed the blood on his bleeding fists and glowed the golden color of dawn. Naruto felt his chakra drain faster than ever, and if not for his status as Jinchuriki, he would have lost consciousness already. Chains, of chakra, Aizen breathed out in amazement. How beautiful and befitting of your status. The blonde's eyes widened as a sprout grew unnaturally fast in the center of the seal. 
The leaves unfurled as its stem grew to his height, and Naruto could feel one final tug on his chakra as a bud of a flower appeared on the tip of the plant. The bud unfurled its petal, blooming into a fist-sized purple flower with an ominous orb glowing a sickly purple in the center. This is what you wanted. Naruto growled out, a purple rock. Aizen nodded. It is valuable, now give it to me, Aizen demanded as he reached out. Naruto, feeling extremely weakened, struggled to stand up. Unfortunately, that took a toll on me, bastard, so take it yourself. He growled out. I'm not going to touch this thing for you. The older seal master sighed as he stepped forward. What a troublesome disciple I have. The Jinchuriki scoffed as he backed away to give Aizen enough space to take the treasure. Don't call me that, you traitor. He hissed angrily. Aizen chuckled softly as he leaned down to take his prize. His fingers brushed against the foul purple chakra before plucking the orb off of the flower. Now. Aizen's eyes widened when a hard metal was slammed into his chest, not deeply embedded, but then again, that wasn't the purpose. You. Katon no Jojikafun, fire element cross seal. Naruto whispered as his lips curved up into a grin. Eat this, bastard. He backed away quickly but not before kicking Aizen's hand. The purple orb rolled across the ground. Gawk. Aizen screamed in pain as he tried to reach for his treasure. Unfortunately, a fire-powered shuriken blew him away, slamming him into the wall. He slid down to the watery surface sluggishly. Itachi and Shisui looked at Naruto in disbelief. Good job, Naruto. Shisui congratulated. Naruto sighed as he reached out to the rolling orb, now let's da. Naruto-kun, you did it. Itachi smiled at the boy who was about to reach out for the purple orb, his eyes widened in horror, Naruto-kun. Move. He saw a shadow looming over him and heard Itachi's panicked voice. He couldn't react in time. A sharp pain was felt as a familiar katana nailed his hand to the ground before he could touch the dreaded treasure. Hi. Hina, Morinisan. What are you? He muttered in disbelief as the female seal master looked down on him, her hands gripping the handle of her katana firmly. Hand over the treasure, she said stoically with her eyes devoid of emotion like a lifeless doll. It belongs to Aizen-sama. That's it for part 2. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.